with the space craft with the space craft 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 space uh, going uh, down, going down, 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 so, because we do the flat rate, so, we do the flat rate, 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 Functional I can actually drop trying to trees as well. So wait for the wait for the development of the trees to generate or something else. Yeah, so until until then, should we should we what do you think about using the average tools? We could we could I'd be happy I'd be happy to use it. I had the whole crew I had the whole crew got a we I don't think we're there yet, but we we've been talking about it in our between game. Chat, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I'm happy to manage it, and, and using the tools, uh, the traveler tools makes it a lot easier. But well, then there's still even more ships. We can do that, right? Maybe you do that in the in-game, uh, the side chat that we got going on. Yeah, uh, that's a yeah, good idea. You could definitely do some, uh, some between, especially if you got this crew running, just trade for you guys, right? And then we, we could just have it generate passive income. Right. I like the right. sounds of that. Or they get. Passively blown up. You yeah, have to create a table just to see what happens. Yeah, see if there's an incident. But uh, so yeah, so we have the cargo now. Notes haven't changed, but now we have the status. The only thing in there currently is the refined and unrefined fuel. So you could, we could actually put in how much uh, for fuel tracking if we want to use it. If we, I know the far trader is not too hard to maintain. You get two jumps and it's out of fuel, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Actually, actually, it's you gotta get fuel every time you jump. Oh yeah, that's right. Every time, that's right. Yeah, I think it, with the far trade, if I remember right, it's two weeks of normal operation plus one J two. Yeah. Now, if we make J one drives, then we only use half the fuel if we did one jump versus a one parsec jump versus a two parsec. Per sec. Yeah, that's why I got it. Yeah, because we were hitting those one parsecs for a while, and I, that's why I just had that in my mind. So it's there. That's available for us if we want to use it. Um, and it does. It did update the party sheet as well, if you're interested in watching the cargos. It's currently at negative one. I'll have to, that's because there's nothing in there. Um, <laughs> Poor deck. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know what my else there is. My router turned into flowers. <laughs> Poor man. I think that was the big. That's the only changes that will affect us uh, so far. 
Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's it. So, I guess let's talk about end of last session. You guys flew to Borite, uh, hunting a lead on a transmission that the uh, Varger, uh, what's his name, Parish? Yeah. And his scout courier ship, pirate ship, uh, fled there after the incident with the Sacramont. Uh, where he was actually cast away uh, or marooned. I wish they used that word in this, the adventure, but yeah, he was essentially marooned on a, uh, a derelict space station that was a antique leftover from the Sindelan Empire. Rather than go in and risk an encounter with whatever alien creature was on there that uh, reportedly is on there, uh, you guys actually had him make a break for it in his vac suit and void himself into space where you guys scooped him up. That's kind of how we ended the session. You guys want to fill in any gaps that I missed that are pertinent? We kind of interrogate, uh, interrogated him a little bit. Yeah, he gave, he gave us a big long story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chris's tale, right? Yeah, uh, I got that right there. And I think did I share the actual whole storyline with you? Yes, you did, sir. Yep. Okay. And I got it in my notes. Uh, Princess Ray, uh, Ray Quest Part Two. I've got it saved in those notes. If anybody wants to dig it out. Right, so also didn't uh, the us give us the, the key. yeah, I was going to say from Borei, there's a, a fuel depot J2 away, if I remember right, that would then allow a jump into empty, an empty sector and then a jump into Thieve. Yeah, that's right, the, right, yeah, because you guys are at the fuel station. Yeah, to get to Thieve, you need a three parts uh, right J three ship. It's three parsecs from Noricum, or or you had to get a three parsec jump in a palindrome. So let me go ahead and share this map again. You need to. Whoa! I just closed it on myself. You essentially need to get here from Borite. Um, but he does know of a fuel depot. Uh, I'll mark it. It is. Let me see if I add another one on top of this. Secret Depot is in this empty hex. I just kind of put that square in. We don't know where. It's just somewhere in there. Or he knows where. He knows. Chris knows. So he was worth rescuing. Yeah. This is the the, hot, the captain from the other ship, right? Yeah, I pulled yeah, the company. Yeah. Um, I'd say we don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we're ready to just wander into Thieve. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. All right, so you only have one of the essentially half the equation to not even that. You really want to boil down to it the the piracy for turning in your guys's uh bounty bounty yeah. right so yeah. they're what still doing it. yeah yeah in. so we're we're currently sitting on bull right we just got get, got done fueling up for free because it's a water planet right and did we hit atmo already no, you guys are floating in space because uh, that, that's kind of just how we ended. You weren't going planet side and more right. Decisions had to be made about what to do with Krish uh, and what to do about hunting down the rest of those pirates. There's really there's three ships total, remember? Yeah, we found one guy. Is a, they got scrapped to fix the other one, right? Right. They were so doing. Yeah, the Misery's company was doing emergency repairs here. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's right. And we found the residue of that. Yes, doesn't I mean the, the ship still after they after they marooned Krish, they still got away with his ship, the Misery's Company. And the other two ships are still floating out there someplace. Mm -hmm. And we think they're in Thieve. Well, that's where they operate out of, right? So what Krish tells you guys is that the the leader of this three ship retinue, right, is a guy by the name of Ferric Redthane. Um, he was formerly like a right-hand man to a famous pirate out of Thieve named Admiral Dorican. 
Dorkin still active in Thieve. He's he's one of the major uh, players in the region. Um, but Farrick uh, set off on his own with his own pirate gang and started, you know, kind of raiding these systems. Uh, the the reason going down to Torpal Clark and Blue has kind of hit the uh, they're they're not used as a trade route as much as the uh, uh, palindrome to Norikum to. Th- the, the Thebis, um, or the what do they call it? The uh, the run. What was that run you guys did in the other adventure that we ran? The uh, you remember the I name know, of that? The smuggler's run. Yeah, there was. was, it, was it, let me it find it. Run. I got it. The Borderland run, right? The Borderland run starts typically around Fist. Uh, it goes through the systems of Wildman, Pandora. Right, and then they'll connect either to Blue, Clark, and Torpal, which is what you guys are in, and then the SCM, and then uh, Aslan Space, or go farther, uh, I don't know if that's spin word or not, but going farther out of the way to avoid uh, Jernax. Well, we know, okay, so I'm reading the notes here, and it's saying that Marie Silverhand, the other pirate that we're looking for, so we're looking for Frerick and Selim, so, I mean Silverhand. Silverhand went to Thieve. Frerick doesn't set dare set foot on Thieve because he, he doesn't like the pirate overlord that's there. So my suggestion, my suggestion, gentlemen, is this Ferrex all by himself. This side. Let's hunt him. Okay. Do we have any oh, idea? If, if he can't get into Thieve, do we have any idea where he operates out of well, he's going to need protection from at least another pirate gang. Maybe a quick search of uh, gathering some information of what gangs are around here. There's a few. Deck might know a few individuals in the underbelly of society that might help us along. What do you think, Deck? Well, I, you know... We could certainly go uh, have a beer and see what we could find out. I, I don't know anybody off off the cuff around here. I could. No. Let me see. I, I might be able to. Does anybody have a uh, a navy rank? Huh. Um, actually, I got a marine rank. Hmm. <laughs> um. Yeah, Mizun is uh. Oh one. He's a full ensign. I'll take, um, just give me an intellect check. Whew. Oh, got it, bro. <laughs> yeah. So you do, you know this Admiral Dork and D O R O K Y N. I'll, I'll spell that out here in a second. That. Uh, Chris has been talking about. He is a former Third Imperium Admiral who defected to the the pirates, uh, the systems outside of the here in the Trojan Reach. You know, he and I have a few things in common. Then, now how to? Ah. Uh. So deck could have made the roll too because you were yeah i forgot that. i forgot all about it so i was just took <laughs> i was rank three right on i mean i can't imagine that this admiral is going to be willing to chit chat with just any old spaceship that rolls up with the sob story <laughs> But this former lieutenant of his has a price on his head from this admiral. So if we were to get him, 
it might change that. Or had to thieve and try to hit him up for some information where Ferrick might be at. But that still leaves us with uh, Silverhand to catch. She's on Thieve. Got it again. Sorry, guys. My cat's on my keyboard. <laughs> okay. I, w I was wondering what that was about. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for all the zeros to come in and be like, uh-oh. Tom <laughs> implanted. All right. So it's... It's basically two weeks from where we are to the because we gotta, we've got to jump into that empty sector and assuming that the coordinates that Krish has and a successful astrogation roll, if we can hit with less than a day maneuver, I mean, the good news is an empty sector is basically as soon as you are fueled up and are, you know, a couple of miles from the depot, you can jump again. So do we want to head to Thieve and just do some nosing around to see if we can't find out where this exiled guy might hang out? But if there's a price on his head, we're not going to be the only people looking for him. Well, that, that's that's what I'm thinking, too, Captain, is that there's a price on his head. There's got to be a bounty around here somewhere. I mean, do do notice the, the type of space we are. These uncivilized lands. Are we close enough to bore right for uh, telecommunications? You talking about oh. uh, the bore right main? Yeah, or high port. For, uh, yeah, I think Bore just has a down port though, don't they? Because it's like oh, yeah. classy. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a crap planet. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just wondering I, if we were close enough to hit up their satellites and their communication log into their net. I don't think they have one. Yeah, Bore yeah, the, garbage. Let me well, give you this, no, this there's it's just their starport. Let's see here. I'll give you the here's the whole deal and their tech level is gonna you know, tech level four man that's no they don't even have one. yeah they have fire yeah they make fire yeah they've got tens of millions of people but they haven't gone very far with it all right so Celine is thinking that it just it it's a good place to go and gather information, but she feels that it's going to be weeks wasted because we're going to go out there. We'll have to meet this king of thieves. I'll have to seduce him or probe his mind, and that's probably going to be a bad day. Get the information we want to take out someone who's in his good graces, Silverhand, and then get the information on someone who's not in his good graces, Farrick, to come back out this way and try to hunt Farrick. That's what she is thinking. But whatever you decide, Captain, we'll move forward. Doctor, what do you think? What is your uh, analysis of the situation? Your diagnosis, per se. As she turns and looks towards Carl. A question I have is how much loot did, did they get between Torpal and Blue? Or Torpal and Clark? He still has to sell that metal if he's not already done it. Or whatever it is they stole. It was a yeah. petroleum was a yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys haven't asked him about it. What, what you know. Yeah, they were about petroleum. I'd be interested to know what they were gonna do with that petroleum, what if they were making a bomb or not. No. Oh no no no. If you're are you asking Chris, you want me to role play that one? Yeah, actually, I'll I'll sit down with Crush. Yeah, being the being the <laughs> captain. So, Crush. Yes, yes. Right. How can I help you? The cargo that you stole. In let's see, uh, player needs to ask again. Torpal was one of the places they hit. Was it Clark? Was that the other place they hit? Clark was, yes, but Torpal was the one you guys uh, saw the video footage of them stealing the petroleum products. Okay. So, 
how much cargo did your ship have on it when you were marooned? Um, our ship, not too much. Uh, Misery's company was mostly just uh, dealing in black market uh, rare sentinel and artifacts uh, that we were able to, to get uh, on Clark and Torfel. Interesting. You had... There were our rare artifacts on Torpal and Clark, or yep. is that where you were selling them? Oh no, no, no. We were, we were, we were doing illegal archaeological digs. Let's put a pin in that part of the conversation. Come back to it. Um, we know from the video that the other two ships were involved in stealing some sort of byproduct. Oh yeah. What was that about? Yeah, you're talking about the industrial waste. Yeah, so uh, Farrick had us uh, go ahead and, and go into Torpal and scout out some low-hanging fruit. Uh, we had recently acquired an Imperial salvage ship, and he wanted to uh, see if it was worth using. Uh, we were able to find uh, a buyer for that crap here on Borite. You know, they're still, using, they're still using combustion engines down there. So... That was basically a test run to see if the salvage ship was worth flying. Well, yeah, and to see if that was profitable too. I would say the whole operation just for the salvage ship to bore right was probably break even venture, but uh, Eric's got some other ideas on his hand. So, uh, sorry, players having trouble with names again. The the captain who isn't welcome in Thief, his name again is... Oh, Farrakh Red Dane. Farrakh Red Dane. Got so this right. This Red Dane character, I'm guessing that a lot of pirates operate in and around Thief as they can. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if Red Dane's not welcome there, do you know where his base is? No, yeah. Uh, maybe the Admiral would know, cause just because of his connections. Uh, but definitely uh, Farrick's right-hand man, or woman, I should say, uh, Miria, uh, she would definitely know. Yeah, but if she's Farrick's right-hand person, she's also not likely to blab that. That's true. But she she does not have a bounty on her head. She does uh, reside on Thief. She does keep her permanent residence there. I don't know, because you, you don't have, so there's you're a, not even working there, so you couldn't do a 401k. No, I know, but the point is, why didn't I get it? So, oh, I'm sorry, guy. Um, you know, I look at the others who are here for the conversation. Thief might not be such a dead end and a waste of time as we thought, because... If we can find this silver, the silver hand, then there's a chance that we could follow her ship to wherever Red Thane is. Now, I'm guessing that she's going to be pretty cautious and uh, not just be oblivious flying hither and yon, but that's certainly a chance. And if we let it be known when we get to Thieve that we are here primarily to get an information to work on that bounty, uh, there might be people willing to talk to us. But remember, uh, we got to take into consideration Maria Silverhand is there to recruit pirates for the other guy. So we're going to have to be careful with that. We don't talk to the wrong people. Go undercover. Well... That's when you go into a bar and buy a few drinks and listen to people talk. Yes. You know, get a little party started, sit back and listen to the conversations. Okay. So to Thieve, Captain, we go? I think so. Astro Gator bought us a... Now. And please work with Krish to make sure you have the best coordinates possible. 
yes. Yeah, I, I give you the, the uh, I give you the coordinates, uh, and I'll give you the frequency for the ping. Uh, then you just have to scan it down and just make a beeline for it. Is that uh, depot guarded? Nope. It, it'd only be coincidence if there's somebody there uh, using the, the refuel. Is there some kind of special code we need to fuel? Or how much they going to charge us? It, I mean... Is it an easy ready? So I just dropped my astrogation skill over that astrogation box in the task chain. Uh, so the... Uh, <laughs> So the, just real quick, so I give you the, the information on this real refuel dump, how it works. Um, the fuel dump is assembled. Um, uh, All it is, is is hundreds of 4D ton hydrogen drums linked by pipes and and uh, different different uh, entities in Thieve. will they'll make a two parsec jump from Thieve to that system to pump it, you know, refuel, which right. we're fine. And then they jump back into Thieve. So it, it is. Uh, it, yeah, it, it, it is technically free. Um, okay. Yeah, they're, uh, but Chris says you, you, once we get there, I'll have to show you which ones to use because some of these are booby trapped for those that, uh, that accidentally find it. And will it record that we got fuel and and they would know whether or not we were part of the pirate core or not? All things, all things considered, this is very primitive. Um, other than the beacon, there's not much technology to this. Okay. I'm right, Captain, I, it. I, I feel safe, Captain, as long as I was just worried about wrong people get wrong information if we're trying to stay undercover so <clears throat> is that Varger? yeah it's Chris have, yeah. Does, have we talked to him about does he know anything about this place about the fuel dump yeah yeah he's the one that offered the, the information oh he's the guy yeah, yeah. sir I got those mixed up okay so then once, Too many captains. <laughs> yeah. Once we have the, or once we've completed the conversation with uh, Krish, and he's working with, um, is it's Sealand, right? Well, Krish is like, well, I don't, I don't operate sober, guys. I'm gonna have to. You guys got anything to drink? <laughs> ah, we always have something to drink. I basically nod to to Sealand. Yeah, whatever. Um, I also look at Zeke. Make sure you keep an eye on him. All right, Captain. Uh, and then I'm going to call uh, Mather, Ranchild, and Manzang. Yeah, our, our uh, two new crew. Yeah, the three new crew members. Yeah, oh, that's right. And once... Krish is in the bridge, and I know that Zeke is on the bridge as well. Um, then I'm going to take them to the crew common area and brew a pot of coffee and sit down for a chat with them. Nah. All right. So, so, so yeah, we, you're going to essentially, we, get to we get, those will be more of a task chain or regular. Uh, role is to persuade them and convince them but you go ahead and say what you're gonna say. i know where you're leading with this but yeah yeah well first of all you all know that we've rescued a barker and do any of you know who he is yeah uh, yes captain the word's already getting around he was the, the captain of the scout ship that attacked us key word there is was no he has some information that will allow us to infiltrate the ports in Thieve on a much shorter time frame than we could do otherwise. And by doing that, that lets us track Red Thane and Silverhand more directly, or that's the hope. Do you have a problem with us working with him to that end? Well, uh, this will be Ranhild talking to medics like, uh, 
Uh, we understand that uh, there's a bounty on his head. Do you still plan on turning him over, dead or alive? Dead or alive. My first thought is, let's see how valuable the information he gives us is. And then we as a crew decide his fate once this is all over. The three of them look at each other, and then they, they look at you. They all nod because they already they're on the same page. As, uh, we we'll work with them, but we want guarantees that he's turned over for the bounty, and we want to cut. That's fair. If he proves loyal and proves worthy of being on this crew, would you accept my paying you? what you would get for his bounty. Man, because, that, we'll, we'll have to see. He'll have to really prove himself. And I understand that, but here's my thinking. His ship was damaged and he was marooned. That's all going to be in the ship's log. If we can capture all three ships and get the bounty for it anyway, and poor Krish died in, in the salvage attempt or died you know, we found him dead at the maroon site. How does that affect the bounty? Yeah, well, as long as as long as the uh, the payees think that he's dead or marooned, I guess they want to know. Uh, now, go ahead. This is a rough. Give me a persuade with a. That was good, man. Give me a persuade with a boon. See if you can keep them in line on this one. Okay, so I click the boon. Persuade. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So they're gonna they're gonna fall in line for now until until Frisch proves otherwise. And you have my personal word. If he betrays us, he will have three feet of static blade sticking out of his chest. They all smile and you know toast their mugs of coffee at you to that. Clink mugs all around. Yeah. And I will head back for the bridge. Right. Uh, by the way, uh, Manzen, if you would like, you can take the helm. All right. So just so you know, Manzegs, where is his, his pilot? He's all that. This is a obviously a first edition traveler character. Because it's a starship. <laughs> so they updated to uh, spacecraft. He seems pretty well as he gets some, uh, you know, food and drink, and I mean the hard stuff. Yeah. Astrogator, do we have a course plotted? Hi, Captain, waiting on you. Have our uh, friends in the back agreed to play nice for now? Uh, is Chris still on the bridge? Uh, be right here next to me, working with me, getting these uh, this course plotted. So that's yeah. that's yeah. what I thought. Yep. I look at Chris and say, the three members of the ship that you had attacked are willing to work with you for now. Loyalty will be repaid with loyalty. Betrayal. And I tap the static blade at my left hand. All right, his eyes go wide, and you see him take a pull and handle of the rum he's got that he found on the ship. Take a swig and then salute you with the mug in his, or with the, the bottle in his hand. Okay.
And uh, Zeke, you're still on the bridge at this point, is that correct? Yeah, he told me to keep an eye on him. I'm on the bridge. Absolutely. So I look at you and say, at the first sign of betrayal, if I'm not there, put him down. Hi, Captain. Is that racist? <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Poor Barker. Yeah. All right, Captain, you ready? Absolutely. Going back to the bridge. Everybody assume their roles on station uh, or on your your Starcraft stations, spacecraft stations, if you haven't already. And we have the test chain going. I've got the astrogation logged. All right, uh, engineer. That's deck. Are you, still, are you still with us, Deck? Oh, he might still be on his phone. Looks like your mic went hot. I didn't hear anything, but. Yeah, that's trolling coming. Excellent. Boom. Nice. Got him. Good okay, job. So that is going to get us to uh, Dead Space. All right, so after trusting uh, the sastrogation to a drunken, traitorously incompetent Varga pirate, uh, you guys jump into empty space. That is literally the, how they describe this guy. Uh, nice. Uh, right. Since I'm sitting at the sensors console uh, as we come back out, letting uh, Man Zeng uh, sit in a pilot seat again, because I still want to see how he does, uh, I will turn the... Uh, the uh, transceiver to the frequency that Krish gave us as the transponder ping to so see we, if, if we pick anything up. Okay. So let me get um, our sensors checked. I got to set it back to eight. There we go. You know that's one skill that I don't have. That was that was our drawing. Yeah. Let me uh, let me tell you if our NPCs if any of them have it. I can't believe he just coon cooned himself up like that, taking up spot in the hole. <laughs> that's gonna be weird. I'm not touching that. Uh, and our astrogator. Uh, no, he's got computer, but so I got. Uh, we have two. You have our Mather, our new astrogator, and uh, our pilot Manzing. Uh, they both have uh, electronics zero, so they can make the roll. Uh, but if anybody else has it, you guys can modify it with your uh, intellect. You know what I mean? I have uh, with a three. It, it, oh, intellect there you go. Or, intellect Sounds or like Carl education. It. Yeah, I think, yeah, it probably, if the example gives you uh, the choice, you get to pick it. So I think Dr. It? Carl, can. He's, he works fine with hands. Maybe he can work these sensors just fine. Dr. Carl? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, no. uh, Back. Nice. All right. All right, so you immediately detect a weak beacon signal. Um, and, you know, Chris uh, confirms that that should be it. Uh, sensors, you know, just go into 360s here in space. You do not pick anything else up in space other than the, uh, the transponder and the, uh, it almost looks like derelict space junk uh, on, on the sensor log, but the, uh, Chris assures you that those are the, uh, the, the enormous four, I don't know what a deton is, but that's got to be enormous. There are, the, these hydrogen drums are four deton in volume, and there's hundreds yeah, of it, them. Did they really give us a picture? Ton. If I remember right, they're 
because the displacement ton, if I remember right, is a thousand cubic liters. Uh, I love you. Where are you going? Maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, same with a, a D ton or D ton is a dimensional displacement ton. Yeah. yeah so these so these have four displacement tons. So it's the it's the same as what cargo is measured in. So when you're talking a ton of cargo, this is a if it's four of them, then it's four tons of. of well, hundreds. Yeah, there's hundreds of 40 ton hydrogen uh, drums linked, linked by pipes. All right. So Chris says uh, to the pilot, and uh, it, loud enough for you to hear, Mizuno, he's like, all right, uh, you have to get in close. The ones that are booby trapped aren't. Uh, uh, Nothing explosive or anything like that. It's uh, poison fuel that'll actually detonate in the uh, the J drive. So uh, you have to get us close enough to get them. Give me a good visual so I can identify which ones are which. I look at the pilot. Make it so. Okay, pilot check. Zinga. And am I getting a sense of this guy's level of competency? Who is that? Var the pilot? Manzing? Yeah. He's pilot too. Okay. I'll play that, but they just don't get modifiers for their attributes that NPCs don't. So that's just. Right. But I'm saying I can, you know, after watching him for a while, I'm going to get the sense that he's about as skilled as, as I am, maybe a little more so. Yeah. Yep, and he is able to get you guys into a range uh, where Krish is able to uh, identify just just based on markings. Uh, appears random to you guys. He's able to identify which ones are which. And uh, all right, he'll, he's gonna have to direct the uh, direct you guys to uh, you know kind of sync up and for essentially a wilderness refuel is what this role is gonna be on. Okay. You have your keys. Then you have your keys. Oh, nice. 11. No problem. Manzing uh, is able to line you guys up for this refuel. Uh, this should take about an hour. So I'm going to add uh, ooh, and plus the distance to. I got to add my times. Yeah, how uh, long did it take us? Yeah, that was a week jump plus uh, uh, another. There's going to be another six hours coming. So let me update the calendar. So one week, so it brings us to 44 day, right? And then I'm going to add six hours. Let me set and APM. So this is my new time hack. How are you guys coming for needing some training rolls? Anybody there yet? Uh, I'm five, still five. counting three weeks. Yeah, I said this yeah, is I need, yeah, I didn't take a peek at what you guys were training to. I just, if anybody was close. Usually between jumps is the time to do it. Yeah, Mizun has three been, weeks left. Mizun has been studying the third Imperium's version of how to make friends and influence people. Nice. <laughs> Working on Diplomat one. <laughs> I like it. That it has merit. All right, guys, um, that's it for downtime. Anything else while we're in this system? Otherwise, we could probably I tell it back to the high guard again prep for our, our jump to Thieve. Yeah, oh, I'd be ready. Um, oh, oh, I see Zeke's got some stuff he wants to ask too. Well, we can cover it out of game. It was just general information for you. I yeah, mean, we can cover that out of game if you want. Well, some some of the, one of your party members should already have some information, uh, and then we can make a roll for it, uh, and I could give you some information now before you jump in. See if anybody has any player background on it. So, Deck, did you get that message? Oh, I forgot his mic's not working. That's probably why he hasn't spoken up yet. No, I got I got my mic back. Oh, okay. Did you were you able to read that whisper? It was kind of from a while ago now. A while ago. Uh, 
Okay. But no, you're from this area. Your your background is. Yeah, sorry though, so I lost the connection. Um, do we have do we have a relationship with them? You don't, no, uh okay. Nick okay. doesn't. Yeah. We just we just know about it. Yeah, do you want me to resend you that whisper? No, nah, I no, nah, I got it. Oh yeah. So Zeke is asking right now in character if anybody knows anything about Thief. Yeah, so I know a little. Sorry, I was preoccupied getting things set up. Um, yeah, I, I know a little bit of stuff. My old man used to run around here. Uh, they're they're pretty uh, pretty nice to pirates going in and out. And there's uh, there's this large company Gadeco that that does a lot of operations on on planet. I don't know a whole lot about them, but I you know I know they're a pretty big corporation. Yeah, they're a mega corporation from the Imperium that will do just about anything for just about anyone. General development company. GD code yeah. is what I call it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Chedico. <laughs> right. That's that information. I will take uh, a streetwise check. Uh, unless I don't have any reason to believe anybody's from Thieves, so it's going to be difficult. Well, well yeah. uh, these questions I would have been asking Kresk why we were in the high jet, the high guard, the jump, the week ago. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you want to ask uh, Krish? Yeah, I mean, how's the chain of command work? Because he's there, obviously. So yeah, he's he, would, he would know. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Good call, man. All right. So, uh, well, uh, we're gonna. Uh, heading to Thief, uh, so you got to understand, Thieves got two two parts. You got the uh, the top side and the down side. You know, uh, of course so I got a good map for this too. Uh, uh, so th those are, that live up top above the, you know, uh, the, on the surface of the planet, uh, you probably usually wealthier. Where where most of the uh, Scum and villainies kind of down in the underworld there. Now we're gonna land in Black Sand City. That is where all incoming traffic comes for trade. Um, there in the upper city. Um, there, the Law of the Lords holds sway. Uh, so anywhere that is marked with a red flag, uh, the law is enforced. Anywhere without a red flag, anything goes. Uh, there was kind of a pirate code to this. Um, and then we have what we call the law of the streets. Um, the only restriction is a ban on any weapons that might breach the city's environmental containment. The punishment for breaking either law is the same, and it's death. Uh, these laws are enforced by the Black Sand Widows. Uh, uh, they just go around performing justice in the name of, uh, of Thieve. Not sure how many there are, but they're just black robe hooded figures that can be seen on every street. Uh, and they usually just their presence alone will, will maintain the law. Uh, these these guys, there's some bad hombres, so, so uh, we don't want to violate any of these uh, red flag laws. Other than that, uh, Thief is, is always open for trade, barter, uh, illicit goods, etc. Here so, we are with an empty hold. Well, an empty hold. So basically, whatever, how does it work? Does like the the leadership give out jobs for specific raids or anything like that? Yeah. We just... Well, yeah. Up on the up on the up uh, the upper city, if you get any within any of the, uh, you're looking for patronage. You definitely could. Uh, we could definitely talk to uh, the admiral. Let me go. I got a little thing on Thief real quick. <laughs> tease, 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 tease. Nope, not this one. Low level zero. Nope. Oh, I don't 
don't have one for Thieves. Um, look at my companion then. But uh, yeah, Admiral Dorkin, uh, he'd be found in the Rose Pavilion. Uh, typically, he's always uh, hiring and looking. Uh, there are, let's see, in gangs. There are different gangs running through the Undercity who are always hiring. Uh, it's usually where the major uh, players recruit their, their pirates. Uh, there is also uh, an Aslan by the name of Irontooth. Uh, he is uh, he's another power broker and an adversary to the Admiral. Well, let me ask you this, uh, Chris. Do we want the Admiral as a friend or as an enemy? Oh. Yes. Yeah, if you befriend him, maybe he won't kill me, so I, I think that would be probably good. <laughs> okay. Um, are these guys cutthroat, trying to kill each other kind of thing? Is that the kind of the way the gangs work, or is it just a no, code, no, of, we, code of yeah. silence of you stay in your area, we stay in our area, and we won't bug you? Exactly. Anything anything that happens uh, tit for tat usually happens outside of Thieves. Um, again, because okay, they're trying to, no one wants to violate the law on planet. Okay. They're both under red flag protection. Uh, now I've been asked to ask who. All right, you were a captain. Who was your uh, black market guru that you always went to? Well, I was always uh, coming up. I started off uh, working on uh, what's his name? Red thing. Yeah, red thing. Thank yeah, you. Thing, yeah, yeah Ferrick red thing. Uh, yeah. I got promoted, eventually became his uh, right-hand man, uh, and then uh, I was able to uh, commandeer a scout trader, and he let me captain that. So Ferret was when, always... But when you went to Thieve and you had products to sell, was there a specific individual that you had the most trust in? Who is Ferret's guy? That's what kind of you're asking, right? Yeah. Yeah, really, it's, it's really, it's... Uh, What's her name? Silver she's the one. Silver yeah, she, yeah, Silverhand is. She's she's the one that facilitates all the trade for the for the gang. Uh, she so, lives. Yeah, she lives in the uh, uh, the old uh, what do we call these like the junk heaps. The uh, ash, ash. The stacks. Yeah, it's essentially yeah. Uh, yeah. It's the Ashardin camp. So you really didn't cover yeah. the trade. You just brought the product there and someone else took care of all the trade. For you. Yeah, and then there is a scrap heap in the lower city. It's a massive junkyard of stolen goods and wrecked ships that uh, the people was, that they can't, if they can't get it on the black market, it just ends up there. Oh, so like spares? We could possibly get spares? Mm-hmm. Yep. And that is where she calls her, her home, is there in the scrap heap. Okay. They charge reasonable prices for these spares, or they charge like everybody else. Now these, if they're in the scrap heap, it's fair game. It's fair game. Oh. Yeah, it'll just take a ton of time to find what we're looking for. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, Chris says, yeah, it doesn't end up in the scrap heap first; it ends there after. So. <laughs> Still might be useful for looking for spare parts. Yeah. Now, if you guys, if we end up in Lower City, which I don't advise, uh, you gotta watch out for the roving blood gangs. Uh, there's scavengers who attack anybody who's uh, visiting the city and looks like an outsider. Uh, down in Lower City, you're not gonna find much red flag protection. Okay. And I, I'll tell you right now, if anybody's on you and they start trailing you, and they find you down in Lower City and they track you down there. That's uh, it's a good way to die and disappear. Uh, I do not want to die anytime soon. So, <clears throat> okay. Any other questions you guys want me to ask them? What I'm hearing is. 
that especially for our first visit, we want to stay topside as much Top as side. possible. Yeah. However, I'm guessing that we can expect to pay a pretty penny for staying topside as well. So we have you, Captain. Yes. Yes, Doctor. No, I said that's why we have you. Ah, that's why, <laughs> why you have me. Uh, <laughs> Well, so do you, Celine has no questions for him. She was sitting back just with listening and watching. Her eyes sometimes shifting through different patterns. <laughs> and just sat back and got up and then uh, walked away at the end of the conversation, heading back, making um, just rounds throughout the ship during these seven days. Well, let's be on our way to Thieve. Time to time lapse, slow advance. If we're ready to make our jump, I am going to clear the task chain real quick. Alrighty, when you guys are. Mr. Astrogator, oh Astrogator. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's not good. Yeah, you just need anything but snake eyes. I mean, it's, oh, it's an yeah. easy astrogation. Yeah, my astrogation's a two, so as long as I don't roll snake eyes, we're good. Yeah. Uh, it's true. Actually, and then, I thought, depending on how many jumps you had to add the dice modifier on how many jumps you were, or part six you were doing. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, what is it for a J2? I think it adds two, so two. It, it, would would be be two. it would still be a success. It would still be a success, but. Yeah, I should jump. Let me make this a six, and then this a six. There we go. I'm ready so for the jet All right. Jack, you got this. Hey. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all I think we're all a little nervous about going in the tees. <laughs> well, <clears throat> Not only am I nervous about going into Thieve, I'm just as nervous about the idea of explosive fuel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would have killed him, too, and that wouldn't have been not in his Yeah, he would have, yeah. So. Let's see if I got any plan of use of Thieve for you guys. Otherwise, I have a cool planet side one. All right, so nothing there. All right, give me a sensors check once you arrive in system. Doctor, if you would, if you don't mind being our sensors operator till we have someone yeah. hired specifically for that. <laughs> yeah, so the system of Thieve, you, you are picking up multiple ship traffic moving about the system, uh, probably in the dozens. Uh, so it's a very active uh, system right now. Uh, ships ranging in size from... Uh, you know, pleasure yachts, far and free traders. Uh, you have an enormous uh, uh, these mega traders coming in system. Uh, there's a system defense boats floating around. You have little individual starfighters. So it's it's active. Not sure who 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 ships belong to who, but it's safe to assume that there's a fight. There's going to be a lot of death in, in the void. Yep, bring it up to System of Thieves real quick. My systems. It is Amber. So, and your P's and Q's. Yeah. Anytime there's a law level zero, it's going to get Amber played. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not red, considering the hostility that could happen here. This is a, this is a violent system. We'll say that. This is going to be fun. All right. So, Krish, you know, he, he decides to mention now um, 
a uh, if you guys want to skip high port, I do have code that, that will get us uh, at a landing pad at the Thieve down port. Uh, my code is good for any ship, regardless of what I fly. What exactly does that mean? Uh, it means that means the, the birthing is paid for through the end of the month, assuming my crew isn't already there using it. Yeah, let's not do that. I yeah, I suggest. I'm not a well, enough guy yet. Agree. Well, that and if anybody is paying attention and his code is used again, then they might know he is alive, and it will blow our ruse of keeping him dead. I agree. I appreciate the offer, Krish, and under other circumstances, I'd probably take you up on it. But in this case, if we're having you play dead, we need we need you to play dead. Yeah, okay, so I do have to roll up then some birthing and fuel here. Now, in this case, if we can get birthing downport, that is what I would request. What was that? Was that on a table? I forget where I left that. Uh, whoop. Oh, and you get to modify it too because when you roll it, you set it for the game, right? Is that what we were doing on those other ones? You were talking yeah. about? Yeah, once you roll it, that's what it is all the time whenever we come here. Yeah. 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 That's why. Yeah, that's why I need to roll it. Um, the table's in the create a section. Greg. Oh, I'm in the central supply catalog. That's why I'm yeah. like, why can't I find this? <laughs> It's in the create planet thing at the end of the core rule book. Yeah. On the section on starports. World creation. Here we go. I'm there. Give me one second. Population. Starport. Here we are. All right. So this is a. Get where you at, Thieve. Starport class A. Excellent. All right. All right. Shipyard repair all. They will scout research tasks. Fuel is refined. Birthing cost is 1D times 1,000. And I got a six. 6,000 credits a day. Okay. Once again, I'm going to ask Karesk, we get a discount for our, the monthly thing that you pay for? Uh, you, you'll have to purchase that when you get down there. Uh, first time visitors got to pay the, pay the fee. Yeah. Something to think about, Captain, if we're going to come here a lot. <laughs> yeah. And fuel costs is either refined or refined fuel is 500 per ton. Uh, out of character real quick. This is yeah. a tech level 15, guys. This is someplace we could get our uh, other ship fixed at. Yes. Yeah, this is one of two places, if I remember right. Yeah, this and Tech World. Tech World's closer, though, isn't it? Yeah, and it may be a little less piratey. <laughs> we might get it for a better rate. Yeah, that too. Here. What depends what you do for the people on this world. Very true. Depends on who you do on this world. All right, are we, entering, are we entering atmosphere for a downport birthing? Because I do have a pilot lane check to make. I got two of them technically, one for uh, the far trader uh, has a glide plane of a brick, so I have to make that roll, then a uh, airfield landing roll. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I got to remember this. I haven't used that one yet. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, uh, in the spacecraft operations, there's a thing on uh, flying in atmosphere if it doesn't have, what do they call it? Uh, uh, there's a term for it. Um, atmospheric operations, uh, streamlined. Uh, and I don't think a far trader is considered streamlined. I could verify real quick. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the far trader is streamlined. It is streamlined? Okay, well, that's, yeah. okay, great. 
Archbader. Where does it say on the? Uh, do you know if it says in the uh, the actual? Like here's the test. Like you know in game. Because I've I've only seen it. Yeah, it's got the fuel scoops. Because if I go to a scout ship, for example, doesn't mean it's programmed correctly, but. Because um, if you look at the hull, the hull differences. So the hull on the scout courier says streamline. The far trader under systems. Oh, it does say streamline. Perfect. It is streamline. So you did program it correctly. Okay, so it is streamlined. So uh, no minus two on piloting checks uh, when entering atmosphere. Oh, yeah, right there. Hull yep. 200 tons streamline. I was going to say, I thought it was, but. Because normally when you have fuel scoops, it's streamlined so that you can do... That would make sense, time. right? Yeah. So a streamlined ship designed for planetary armies could function like a conventional aircraft. Pilot checks are required in high winds and other extreme weather. Uh, because it's a streamlined, I am not going to make that roll. We only have to worry about landing, docking, and landing. So landing in a starport. Uh, da -da -da. And ships have landing gear, a lot of touchdown in the wild. Not worried about that. So landing uh, is a six up. And where are you at, Mr. Menzang? I'm strapping in just in case. <laughs> yeah. All right, got a nine. Like butter. Yeah, Mizzou's gotten comfortable enough that at this point, unless I say otherwise, when he's on the bridge, I'm assuming that all the stations are full, that Sealand is in the sensor's chair or astrogation chair, <laughs> Manzang is in the pilot's seat, um, the doctor's in the sensor's seat, and then Mezun's basically hanging out in the doorway watching what's going on. I'd be that uh, security. I'd be watching security, wherever the security station is. So. Yeah. So you guys are going to get some transmissions, just, you know, digital analog into the computer. They're asking, uh, you know, the length to stay, uh, if you need to unload any wares, uh, and then um, uh, the refuel capacity that you, you're going to order. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Does Jason. Does Steve have... Shoot. Steve does it. have a gas giant. If we need to, we could fuel there. Uh, what's the fuel cost here? Uh, 500. It's 500 per ton. Um, it's 20. <laughs> it's, four, four, it's like 41,000. Four, four, yeah, 41,000 credits or something like that. Yeah, and we've got an empty hold. Uh, we do have two weeks of operation, so I guess worst case scenario. Uh, let's pay four days birthing costs and then figure out what we can what we can scare up as far as cargo goes. And then while we're doing that, some of us can be uh, tracking down news of Silverhand. Ooh, I'll go look for Silverhand. You want me to stay with Kresk? Please. Why, it's, or are we going to keep Chris. him on the ship? Or Kresk? Yeah. See what he maybe, what contacts he makes. I think we should keep him in the ship and um, just stay there. Don't let nobody know that he's alive. And uh, I don't know there, soldier man. I might need you to come with me in this big scary town. Little old me is just, just so little. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> All right. It's up to you, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> right, so you Remember, you got the technically the four emphases, not just Krish. Yeah. Uh, I would ask Chris uh, to carry the facade that you're dead. Are you willing to stay on the ship? We'll bring some alcohol or whatever you need. And I work for drink. Okay. I will go with Celine, I guess. 
Yeah, the two of you take. Would, I think we might need Deck to come with us too. Shut up! I might have to do him, or no. You All take right, the I'm first. ready. You ready? And I will have my. Uh, uh, let me make sure I got this on. Hang on, I gotta make sure I got my. Uh, this is a law level zero. I can actually carry my stuff. So, Seelin, Deck, and Zeke take 24 hours, do what you need to, then report back to the ship. Um, I look at the um, the other three NPCs here, um, and I basically set up a rotating watch where they're eight hours on, 16 hours off. And they do have permission to um, to hit dirt side during that 16 hours, with the note that if they are late, they will be left. Doctor pay. So, despite paying for four days, you're making them check in every every day. Yeah. Well. We also, we do need people to stand watch and make sure nothing's happening to the ship, so. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, we, you know, we'll see how it goes. We, we might be back in 24 hours. There's, there might be things to do. Yeah, I can give you a quick, so when you guys were landing, I mean, the port, the deep down port looked like a, a swarm of titanic black scarabs from above. Every landing pad has huge bay doors that close overhead. So when a ship is docked, it conceals visitors from watch live. So you guys do pay for some some protection. Okay. Oh yeah. Also, there's I see that they have a very thin atmosphere, so that makes sense that they have to have some protection to Boom. be able to come and back home. I'm, wa uh, I'm waiting for a, I'm waiting for a plot moment to give you guys a map too, but it's it's coming up. Uh, Doctor, you also have the broker skill, is that correct? No, 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 no. that's the one that I do not have. Oh, no, I no, think. that's deck. Yeah, that's deck. I've got admin, diplomat, streetwise, carouse. Hey, deck, while you're out and about with Sealin as you can, if you'd be looking for cargoes for us. Always have my eyes open. And if anyone's running freight that's less than legal, don't be shy. Hey. So I have this body that I kind of want to sell some parts off of it and maybe even make a trade with another doctor around here. What are you guys willing to help me with that? I, man. That sounds like a great night out. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So I, I just I, didn't know how to ask you guys, and I've been, I've been, uh, cool. Yeah. It's just been, a, it's been a while since I've been to one of those kinds of establishments. So let's go find ourselves a beverage, and we'll find your, find your buyer, man. Yes. Because oh, I studied and. Angelic uh, in tech world with uh, Carl. I say an angelic uh, bodies. Really? I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. Craftier than I thought. Yeah. Uh. And just to clarify, Greg, that 16 hours and eight hours, the eight hours is standing watch. Yeah. And I didn't advance any of the time either, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey. So, yeah. I, I have an interrupting question that I gotta make. Maybe about like yeah. five or six minutes ago, did you guys hear like a ding ling ling? No. Uh, no. No. Okay. I, one of my dogs was howling a couple minutes ago and may have okay. picked up that flat. I got the sound off on my phone, so Yeah. No. Not. It it was just me, Jason, that heard it. I'm sorry. Jason subscribed and it didn't do like this. Woo, you're 
subscribed. It was supposed to. We're bummed. Uh, <laughs> okay. Bummer, Twitch. Bummer. Are we still so like four you, more days of study, and I should be good on diplomat. Did we get another? We got another week. Did you get another week? Yeah. So we're at six we weeks. Can, yeah, and another day rolled into another day with the hours it took to get here. All right, Greg. I uh, I'm carrying five. I I'm trying to update my thing, but it's not okay. Five frag. There's where's my stun grenade. I've got both my pistols, five frag grenades, and five stun grenades. That's it. Alright, so everything's out of the locker. Yeah, I'm not sure why my stun grenades is not where it belongs. Oh, because I gotta have it carried, that's why. Okay, there. okay. There you go. Cool, cool. Oh, I'm lightly encumbered, though. Uh-oh. <laughs> I have to change that. Well, I'm not going to be carrying that, so let's drop that. I thought that didn't change anything. While they're out doing their thing, Greg, I am going to stand the first watch. And part of what I'm doing while I'm on watch is running my uh, sonic sweat and stain remover over all the clothes and then doing a search for the a hairstyler for an appropriate hairstyle for where we are. OK, yeah, fit in, yeah. All right. I'm, are you guys exiting the ship those that are going by? Uh, Portside. Yep, I'm ready. Okay, so I, do, ready. I do have a little bit of narrative for you. So upon arrival at the starport, uh, you guys are met by a young woman who introduces herself as a widow. She has clearly benefited from genetic and cybernetic augmentation and may even be a clone. She wears loose black robes that can conceal any number of weapons. The widow explains the simple laws of Black Sand City. I know you guys already heard it, but she's going to repeat it. Here in the star, here in the starport, or the upper city, or any building marked by red flags, the law of the lords holds sway. The law of the lords is no murder, no weapons fire, nothing that offends the calm and tranquility of the city. Anywhere else on the planet's surface, anywhere in the canyons below, anywhere not marked by red flags, another law holds sway: the law of the streets. The only restriction is a ban on any weapons that might breach the city's environmental containment. The punishment for breaking either law is the same, and that's death. And with that, she uh, she holds up a little holographic display on her data pad. And it says, this is the uh, the map of the city. Feel free to you know, the, the, grab this download. And with that, she turns around and walks back to her station there on the starport. Not, not, uh, not even hesitating to see if you guys have any questions. Hmm. Very friendly I, place. I enjoy yeah, the straightforwardness. I do have an image of a uh, black sand widow. She's smiling. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah, anyone who looks like that, you know you probably don't want to mess with them. <laughs> I'd hate to see just how many blades come out at that point. No kidding. For those of you those that are familiar with Third Imperium space or any, any kind of cultured space, um, this part already, the upper city where you're at of Black Sand feels like a corporate enclave or a high quality hotel or are, uh, 
pristine quarters and comfortable meeting rooms as you're going down and looking down the different sections of the port uh, where businessmen and diplomats, diplomats alike can meet and discuss matters of importance. Everyone that you see in the upper city speaks in, they call it cir circumlocutions. I don't know that word, but it, it's uh, as if they're embarrassed to admit they are discussing piracy and murder. Uh, so that they're trying to act like, uh, you know, law-abiding citizens, even though they're all <laughs> over, over, yeah. over, over, overdressed cutthroats. Yeah, circum, circumlocutions are, you talk around the subject, you never talk about the subject. Yeah. So... Nice. And then, so with that map, um, I have my locations of interest up on my side, so I'll let you guys get to it. So you're starting off up in one in Downport. So go. Uh, this map is so big, I'm not gonna, you know, put your tokens down for scale. You just, you're where that, that blue box is, and then you guys can draw where you want to go or describe what you want to do. Well, I'll tell you, my take on this is it may take us a little while to figure out some of these things. We got four days in camp. I know the captain wants us back, but, you know, he'll get over it. And <laughs> maybe we go, let's go get a room at the Grand Hotel, and then we can take take our time kind of scoping this place out, Doc. Yep. And hey, maybe at the hotel bar somebody knows something. Maybe there's All a right, convention. So, yeah, the Grand Hotel, it, it it's, uh, rises like the sort of Damocles over the city. It's actually the largest structure in the, on the planet. Uh, the Grand Hotel is the biggest and best hotel on Thieve. Uh, it caters primarily to visitors from the Imperium. There are obviously other hotels uh, for visitors uh, such, you know, that, you know, kind of can sort with pirates and thieves, but, uh, that's, that's a big one. Mm. So, yes, I agree, uh, there, Deck. I could use a nice full-size bed for a change. And Captain will be fine. He has crew to, to set schedules for. Yeah, he won't even miss us. No, 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 not at all. Zeke, my friend, what <laughs> say you shot. let's head off? Uh, well, I will go back to the ship and stand my turn of tour of duty for watch. But other than that, yes, I will be with you guys. Hmm. So I say we, uh, with that, Celine just turns and gives one of her strangely wicked smiles and starts stepping off of the, the platform, making her way, uh, to the Grand Hotel. So everybody that's off ship uh, heading to the hotel then? I'll go where Celine's going until it's my time for watch. So, yeah. Yep, I'm going. A nice comfy bed instead of that hard rack would be good for the night. <laughs> Yeah, I'm following. All right. So, checking into the hotel. So this is pretty opulent, the lobby, you know, find, uh, you know, marble uh, colonnades in here when you walk in. Uh, it looks like everything's gilded and gold, whether it's real or not. Nobody, you know, you'd have to get on it and do, do a little mineral check. But um, you got, you know, what you would expect, the bellhops, people holding the door for you. Well tailored suits of the people behind the counter. Smile, everybody's smiling. Hmm. Interesting. So Dick walks uh, up to... Can I do a quick recon check and see how many armed people or if I see bumps and 
you know, all these soup carrying go gooders. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I should say, as you walk through the streets, the, there's practically, no matter where you look, uh, you're not out of sight of a widow. There are oh, these okay. black robe wimp. Yeah, they are literally uh, everywhere. They are literally everywhere monitoring all right, the all city. Right, I'm fine. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I should mention that. Okay. Because I, I don't have recon, so uh, that wouldn't help anyway. <laughs> oh, this has a good description of them, too. They never say a word, uh, but other than their their uh, winkless stares, they smile like light glinting off a razor-edge knife. <laughs> <laughs> That's the description of them. They don't talk. They just they got that smile. And it's nothing, Celine. Well, gentlemen and lady, we have arrived at the Grand Hotel. Uh, I heard Dex say that he was heading towards the the kiosk yep. there where the worker is at. Yeah, I was gonna see if I could secure us some rooms. What do you say, Zeke? Skip out on. Skip out on shift, get you a nice rest tonight. I can't do that to the captain, sorry. <laughs> I'm all right. Besides, I'd like to get to know uh, Crush better anyways. I'll probably go back and drink with him later. So. Oh, we, might have to, we might have to be a little careful if we go roaming around this evening then. Oh, I said I'll go back to the ship where he's at, so... Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd kind of like to walk up to the front desk and see if I can negotiate a good price on three rooms for the evening. And the time is the time one one thirty in the morning there. Well, that's that's actually that's the time standard Imperium standard. Uh, we'll, we we can make it early morning right now. I'm good with that. Okay. Give you a full day to explore. Yeah, so none of those times will actually probably correlate with the planet you're on. That's based well, on yeah, the, that's what, know, that's, okay, a 24-hour so, uh, rotation, 365-day orbit around a, a sun. Right. Not so what time? System. What time is it here on Black Sand City? What time is yeah, it here? We'll, we'll call it 9 a.m. I'm gonna give you. A, I'm gonna give you a full full day head start. Okay, so 9 a.m. Yeah, that gives me time to at least six or seven to lounge around in the room. Yeah, I don't have a description on what a, a normal day is here. So I heard uh, Deck was going to inquire about a room rate. Yeah, I mean, even if we're not going to go crash right now, I'd like to go ahead and secure rooms, and we'll have mm -hmm. a so we'll know kind of. Yeah, if everything goes on. Here's where everybody. Our stand, up. our standard rooms, uh, either double queen or a single king, is 180 credits a night. We have uh, suites going at 500 credits. Those come with double rooms, and a kitchenette. Always got to get the kitchenette. Yeah, we definitely need at least one suite. We could share a suite, we should get two. Do you have adjoining suites? We do have adjoining suites available. Oh, uh, we'll take we'll take two adjoining suites. We might we might need to entertain later this evening. Uh, yes, that is a good idea. Yeah, so take up credit. Four, four rooms. That's Put this on like Captain two, Crash. Two. <laughs> no, shh, shh, shh. no, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah. What? Captain Mesmer? The captain told us <laughs> to come get the room. Yeah, they accept uh, standard crud sticks. <laughs> oh, I got them. I got you covered for, I got you covered for a night. Are we staying one? Are we staying two? We're staying one at least. One at least. We're not quite sure when we're going to check out yet, so I'll just settle up with you each each day. That works. That's what were they? I'm sorry. Would you say uh, five hundred a night for one? So you're going to be doing a thousand for the two. Yeah. 
Alright. So, uh, carry here, guys. Here's your keys. Um, so we've got two two suites adjoining. Doc, I don't know if uh, your you know your thing sounds a little a little iffy. I don't. We're, we probably need to find a place that might be kind of a nighttime thing. Um, yeah. But maybe you know we get to meet a few people. We have a cocktail party tonight. You don't know. I don't know what might happen. Uh, while Celine, uh, while Deck and Carl are talking, Celine grabs her key and then heads straight to the elevator up to the room. Uh, along the way, is there any type of data pad or anything that she can access to um, do online shopping? <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, and then she's she's That'd heading up there. She's uh she's checking. Do, do I got to roll an electronics check, or is it just easy to see what the local fashion is? Um, read the local it, news headlines. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not worth doing a check on that because that'll be, you know, the the the, the free news worthy streams that come through your data pad. Yeah, and then check the Black Sand City uh, Gazette or whatever it is for any new local clubs opening up. What uh, you know, I want to Black Sand City Google the. Uh, top 10 rated areas around see what their yelp reviews are on the way up and into the room okay i'll give you i can roll out a few for you you know a little bit uh zeke's going with her okay <laughs> all right what else what what's the i guess what's deck doing deck and Carl. Um, so i'm i'm kind of want to walk around get the lay of the land of the hotel just to understand that like where's the bar where's the concierge we're gonna need them mm -hmm. you know, yeah yeah i'm so gonna kind of start my task of trying to find the right person yeah i should roll you a name of the uh the hotel um bar right yeah d66 yeah. compendium <laughs> i gotta get that thing it's nice I got both of them. Yeah. yeah. Does it They're work fun. in D and D? No, it's only for this rule set. Let's see. Got a bar name, a restaurant here. Ooh, bar name. Here we go. All right, guys. Oh, that's not fun. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the bar here is called Full Thrusters. <laughs> well, that could be taken a couple of ways. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Literally. Let's see if this one's got one. Okay, so full thrust is the concierge is going to be here in the lobby with you. Uh, you know, and it's got a large lobby, you know, you know, chairs sitting around uh, on the coffee table. As you hear some, some water tri trickling in the background, some water fountain going. <laughs> Get the, the smell of uh, chlorine. There must be a pool nearby. So once we're in a hotel, we don't need our mask, right? It's normal oxygen. Yeah. So it is climate. Yeah, it is uh, climate controlled. Okay. Yeah. Um. So what do you think, Doc? You want to get a little rest before we go out looking for that? I, I'd like to at some point. Um. I don't know that we need anything right now, but I'd kind of like to check out the scrapyard and and things just to to see if maybe those are good places to pilfer parts um there yeah, definitely yeah. looks like there's a few places for nightlife which uh i i keep hearing about this full thrusters place we should probably we should go check that out i kind of look at my 
Look at my wrist. wrist where my watch used to be and say, okay, time looks good to me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we don't need to right now. What I'm saying is we can rest and then... And then head out. Or you can go find some right. scrap. Where, where the fuck does Celine go? She's always disappearing. Yeah, I... She sounded like she wanted to go... Sorry. She wanted to get a little shut eye. She she's already gone up to the room, I believe. Typical. Alright, well. Let's go get some sleep and then, then we'll go up. Get it. I don't even know what time it is. It's like what, ten in the morning? Maybe it's been an hour since we've gotten into yeah. the hotel. Maybe I'm, I'm uh, we kind of wait to see what other events happen before I roll out the time lapse. But yep, so D Dick's not tired, but you know, I'll kind of relax, click on the TV, see what, see if there's anything around the room to kind of give me more information about this map. Like, what are what are these places? What's the cliff district that you know? at the shopping district yeah you want to get some of the you descriptions know, yeah yeah, yeah you know, so a little hotel book that tells you things yeah yeah so i give you i got some mm -hmm. that's lower city description i'll start with upper city description so the cliff district uh that's where the corporations are based uh specialized uh, well in different types of illicit uh, items uh questionable activities we'll say uh, I guess the hotel guide won't say that specifically. You'll have to ask around to see what that is. That's where I need to go. Uh, go ahead. There's a term called going to the cliff. It's black slam slang for resorting to illegal methods. So, at the uh, the Callow's Shipyards. Man, this gives me the, uh, the stuff you need to roll on. So the Callow Shipyards is what it sounds like. Uh, the Rose Pavilion, it's an expensive and exclusive restaurant with many private booths uh, specifically designed for secret discussions and deals. But there's a large club uh, kind of uh, here at this, the rooftop. All right, the Mergen Consortium is a uh, mercenary company. Yeah, they own a very large building there. The uh, Chardon Camp. Uh, that's typically where people who arrive on Thieve to live and work on Thieve that don't have uh, uh, money to pay the uh, extraordinary prices of the upper city but don't want to live down uh, in the lower city. So they stay in the camp. Uh, let's see. So that's it for the upper city. You're not going to get a listing from the hotel in the lower city uh, without asking around. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. I'm kind of plotting out a little. You know, so, uh, 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 go check this out. Go check that out. Kind of Zeke, what you would see while we're up there in the room and they're doing that would be uh -huh. uh, Celine kind of uh, dancing around, maybe singing in the shower a strange uh, Hedoni uh, song in uh, Angelic. And then shortly, probably about 20, 30 minutes later of us being in the room, they we start hearing knocking at the door. It's probably going to be the clothes that I've ordered and uh, food that I've bought. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll answer the door. <laughs> it's a bellhop. He's, uh, well, about three of them. There's one with a food tray and two with some clothes carts. Okay. <laughs> uh, sir, I don't think this is for you. Is the uh, lady around? Uh, she's, uh, around, yes, but, uh, I'll bring it in. All right, they wheel it in. Uh, the, the first two that come in, they, they leave, and the third one holds his hand out, waiting. Of course he does. Uh, I'll give him, uh, five credits. He just gives you a squint and grabs it and walks out. Yeah, I was afraid of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Five credits. <laughs> I would think that after that, Celine might spend another hour or so going through all of the clothes, checking the, the fashion of what is around, um, getting herself prepared, 
and then uh, just nibbling at all of that food that was purchased, really, not not eating much of it. And then uh, coming out and look over at Zeke, it's, it, is Deck and uh, Carl not made their ways to the rooms yet? Uh, not I bet you they're I down at the bar getting drunk. Uh, I'm not sure what they do. You really feel. didn't tell them what you were doing, so you just... We didn't oh, I didn't? Chance. No. See, sometimes I say that in my head, and I keep forgetting other people can't hear it. So. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> um, yeah, and then she prepares herself, straps her pistol to her side still, and uh, I'm going to unequip my armor, obviously, now, and my other stuff. And head on down to the bar uh, over comms, though. Uh, everybody else has got comms, so open wide channel. Uh, you would hear, Dak! Carl! Where the hell are you? I am ready. I cannot believe that you did not wait on me. What kind of assholes are you guys? <laughs> she just shakes his head. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I was asleep. <laughs> uh, we were just kind of chilling in the room. Maybe <laughs> next time, knock on the door. Yeah, we uh, are right where next are door. Where are you? Uh, she I'm resting. Walks out. So since we've got adjoining rooms with keys, uh, I'm hoping that work. I'll go over there and open it up. And then as Celine walks in, a cart full of food um, seems to be being pulled behind her with nobody pushing it. Once again, Zeke just shakes his head. I gotta get used to this. I gotta get used to this. I gotta get used to this. <laughs> oh, you brought lunch? <laughs> Why, of course, Deck. I need you uh, full nice. belly before you get drunk. Ah, oh, very nice. Thank you. Thank you indeed. I was just thinking what what we might need. Yeah, when you guys are drunk, it's easier to operate on you. And when that is said, Celine's normal, uh, <laughs> strange nature kind of comes serious for a moment, and she looks over, and she sidesteps. That's not funny. A joke. Calm down. I would never tell you I did it. Don't worry, I Zeke, won't think about it either. Me? Captain. Captain. Carl's talking about operating on me. Captain, you can't let this happen. Sir, sir, are you there? <laughs> Captain, check in over. This is Celine. I can't hear you. Why don't you talk to him with your brain power? No, because he freaks out. I do that when he's sleeping. Oh, shit. Well, that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Captain DeSeeland, while you are off the ship on personal time, you can deal with whatever you get yourself into. Rod. <laughs> so I've done some research, gentlemen, on um, some things around. I've also gone ahead and booked a uh, us transportation around the city and a few reservations at some finer restaurants and nightclubs. So now it's up to you to tell me which ones we're going to. Full thrusters. Hey, sir. My network just came up, so it flipped me, so I missed the last few minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you disconnected from the game, too. So you, you, are you, you said you're flipping over? There he is. He's connecting now. I was, just, I was just about to say that if your if your network's coming up, let's take five. Now we give you a time to connect. All right. Yeah, that's a good good time to take a bio break and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Let's take five and uh, hopefully uh, Penguin stuff comes back up. Dun dun dun. We will okay, be so right back, minutes. you guys. Don't hit that button, Jason.
sorry, I must have missed something. I sent you a whisper in game, in the game chat. Oh, is that? And then, then that list was to that whisper. Um. Okay, where do I? Sorry, I'm still learning fantasy ground. Where do I fantasy find that? Where, where would I try to be? Where would I try to be? The knee, the knee. Make sure this right. Yeah. So, right yeah. So, yeah. your game chat. Maybe the last. Maybe the last. You may have scrolled out of your game chat. Bottom of your game chat. Maybe hung. Maybe not. Maybe hung. Okay. Guess what I see in this game. What I see in this game chat is there are. Chat is there are. There are several reputable, there are several traders, reputable in the traders in the cliffs in the cliff district in the cliff district publicly. Yeah. So nobody yeah. saw that. So nobody saw that. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. that's yeah. Yeah, that's that yeah. was a whisper. Sorry. That was yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And then and then and yeah, then and then I already rolled out a couple of names. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's the thing that I don't know well, if we know. That, that technically really doesn't matter uh, because all these roles are based on the system you're in. That's the system you're going to. There's something that's – there's a couple of them that have the distance, though, no? Yeah, when you get paid. Yeah, yeah the payout is based on distance. Uh, and what we're just going to say is we'll retcon the destination based on what happens here, assuming you guys get off planet alive or with your ship. Be it, very you true. Know. Very, very true. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So we're um, – sorry, just still out of game. We're, we're really just kind of doing recon this mission, right? And – we're going to just do standard freight and mail kind of crap. That's what I was under the impression. We were yeah. just kind of okay. Like okay. Getting a feel for. How this Agree. Yeah. Works. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Okay. So freight traffic, uh, I'm ready. And I know, I think you, you, you've got it all set, but, uh, so one more time, you roll 2D on the freight traffic table three times, once for each for incidental, minor, and major lots, and applying the following modifiers. So I have the system of Thieve up. And Thieve is a A, starport excellence, so that's plus two. Let me get my, let me get some scratch paper up. I know you got your, your thing deck, but so. Plus two for the system. World population is five. So no modifier for that. Right. Uh, tech level is high. Uh, it'll probably give us the plus two for tech level. It is a amber zone, so it's a minus two. Yep. All right. And then based off that, then we have our major, minor, and incidental. So minus four, nothing, plus two. So I got, well, I got, I got minus two, two, four. Oh, well, yeah, mine would be if going in that order. So major would be minus two, two, yep, and four. Okay. Yep. Major, minor, incidental is minus two, two, and four. Yep, gotcha. Okay, so broker streetwise, we'll start with the major. I need to be. Who's with me? Who's got a better streetwise than me? I got a one in broker and streetwise. The doctor's with you, as far as I know. Yeah. I feel like you're the one rolling on all this stuff before. I, I was the last time. Hey, Josh, I thought, we still can't hear you. I thought somebody had a three streetwise or two or three. I thought the doctor did. But we didn't have the doctor here last time. Uh, yeah, no, I got it. Sorry, I've been saying that, but I oh, yeah, made myself like an idiot. Okay. So you just roll it three times, and I'll get the the value. So street, it's your streetwise is a minus two. Then your streetwise at a plus two. Then your streetwise at a plus four. So uh, that was just a straight up streetwise. So yeah. that's a uh, four. Your next straight up streetwise. That's better. Yep, ten on minor. Uh, then your your regular uh, straight up streetwise. This will be for incidental. Is it rolling the same way it was Monday? Extra slow. Yeah, Jeff. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just like, it's like hanging. Yep. Yeah, it's very, uh, dramatic. Yeah. Got dramatic die. I go with my personality. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah, that oh, is yeah, hilarious. that is like super slow. <laughs> uh, that'd be a 16. All right. So 4, 10, and 16. Do you guys want to roll for mail, too, before you commit to freight lots? Just to see if we can get it? Yep. 
Yeah. Did they have mail here? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, they would. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. And, but I don't. I don't award the uh, highest naval or scout rank because that doesn't. Right. They doesn't apply to these people. Right. So. Um. Um. Kites. So give me a freight traffic DM. So one more streetwise. Eight. See, I thought we used what's off of the what was off of our freight room. So our yeah, but you rolled it. Uh, yeah. Well, fuck, man, I, I keep going. I know I have screwed this <laughs> up, but so you rolled two D on the freight table three times, once for each. You're right. We should have only had the one roll. I don't know why I keep going and doing that, where I make a roll for each one, but it's. It's that's effect. what the rules. That's what the rules say. <laughs> right. Uh, no. No. That. Yeah. That, it says that's that, right for, for. That's right for each of those. I'm just saying for the mail check, we already have our DM, right? Because you use your freight modifier, which was a two. Yeah, but we should also have the effect, right? Right. The effect is will be nothing, right? Because we had our our freight modifier was two, so the modifier the effect will be zero. So yeah, because. That didn't help us. The ship's armed now. This is just what I have. The okay, ship's so armed now. Okay. The highest okay. naval rank actually. We don't. We won't be taking. We don't take it out in, oh, outside the right, territory outside of, on yeah, my I campaign. Yeah. Use, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, so if, yeah. So plus so zero. Well, this armed is. Yeah. Plus two. So you got a plus two. Why? Well, and social so standing. We get a. Well, of course we don't have him with us right this minute so we had i had a one in there for social standing yeah it, we'll, 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 we'll use it okay we'll, we'll use it so that's so a that's three right? plus three so just roll 2d plus three and then if it's a 12 or higher there's now <laughs> that doesn't look Ooh, ow those ones are <laughs> just sitting on my screen for a long time good grief that's a funky roll <laughs> at least it did it there Celine, are you tr are you controlling the dice? That's what it looks like. I think she's controlling the dice. Yeah, she really is. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so now for the freight traffic for the major, we had a four value, so there's gonna be two D lots. Is that how you're tracking it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and give me a. I'll, I'll, I'll just roll these out real quick. 2D for that. I got 10. That's an 8. Yeah, 10 is a 40. I'll roll it. 17 minor. Oops, double, double it. And 16 for incidental, which is 60. Are you doing this off the new freight table, Greg? Yeah. So 26. So we have uh, lots. We have 8, 17. And twenty-six. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um. Fuck. And a major lot is. Oh, low ten tons. A uh, minor is one D times five. Oop. Another one, so only five tons for a minor, and incidental is one D ton. This could actually be, and they're three tons. All right, so major, you have eight lots of major at 10 tons a piece available. What's our max capacity? 60. Well, 59, really. Yeah, so we could, you'd only take five of these. Are we so hauling we five? We can take five of the majors oh yeah if we don't take five, passengers five. then they don't need any i'll tell you right now five major and one minor is 55 tons right there right i, I got that we can take we can take five one and one and that that'll max you out and then no. you're, not, you're not talking passengers baby pretty much after that right 
that's that's assuming we don't take any passengers. Well, with four new crew members aboard, how many staterooms do we have? Um, damn, that's passengers? a good. I have not calculated those guys yet. Um, so we probably need to remove that's another. Two, that's, that's two staterooms. <clears throat> Well, I'm thinking three because I'm not sure I want to put Christian in the room with one of the other guys. I'll I'll cipher on that. I was going to say instead I, of slowing the game down, I'll figure that out later. Chris can okay. stay with that's me. A, that's a good question. But I mean, we could take six low passengers if they're available. But it's got to save one ton overall of space, just because even though they take fractions of a ton, you have to have the volume. Yeah, that's that's why I knocked it down to fifty nine. For, for that, so I'm only I'm only filling up 59. So you're taking five one and one, right? Well, and maybe less than that. I'll 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 figure it out like okay. without slowing us down for a minute and okay. Um, figure out what those are. We got four because you're right. We got four new crew members that I didn't take into account. But honestly, I can't remember all that stuff, so <laughs> I could look it up. <laughs> yeah. Is it is it a, for that voice? Is that me that you guys are hearing that on, or somebody else? It's a background noise. I bet it's me. No, it's seven, eight. for me. Let me let me mute my mic. I've just noticed when. So it's, no, it's not you, Greg. Okay. Cool. I could hear my AC running. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I can hear a couple of ACs running, but like when Josh was speaking, it seemed like there's a, a pitch that starts and then fades off and starts and fades off. That noise right there. <laughs> yeah, that's... Now I'm hearing something. Yeah, that's new. I hear now. Yeah, I was gonna say now. Now that's all I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah. So. Jeff's muted, so it's not him. So I just I'm muted. I turned on my game. It. Okay, there we go. I'm muting myself there. All right. So anyway, it was just a spaceship coming in low. Yeah. There you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Almost like we're in high for it. Almost. <laughs> but, you know, that Atmo landing, some of them ain't got that skill. So we've we've negotiated our lots. We have our uh, stuff established. Let's make our way through this bazaar there. Maybe there's some shopping that I missed or some information to be gathered. Oh, the cliffside, yeah. You might find Mizzou in there already unless he, he wants to link up with you guys. Well, first thing, after I've done that research, I definitely want to take a look around. In the starport area, are these, are these Black Widows or whatever they're called, are they kind of all over here as well yeah yeah they're, they're, they're got overwatch pretty much over every every nook and cranny of upper city okay well in that case then i will let the other three crew members know that they don't have to stand watch i'll make sure that they have my comm code so if they want to get back in the ship they know how to get in touch with me and then I'll lock the ship up, and yeah, it's time to go shopping. And a little info gathering. So at that point, then I will call Sealand uh, and Deck to find out where they are, to see if they're together, or if they're if they've gone their separate ways. 
and just to I mean just so that everyone's on the same page the freight we're actually brokering for basically it's in a couple of days relief. yeah so none of that's actually happened yet no but we've checked out and walked past a few buyers and sellers getting some ideas of who we might want to talk to So what kind of vehicle we got carting us around? Uh, it'd probably be a little hovercraft limo style. We need a stretch hover. <laughs> uh, did we ever go into the bar at the hotel? No. Thrusters? So, no. Nope. We uh, thrusters, I thought Thrusters in. was in five in uh, section five. No, that's that is the name is the Rose Pavilion. The hotel bar was Thrusters. Ah. All right. So uh, as we're walking thrusters. around, I'm I'll be looking for uh, I guess job boards, work boards, whatever you want to call them, and traveler. Um. Mainly. Uh, people looking to get jobs yeah give me um a carouse or streetwise check if the if you're doing this <laughs> and the streetwise does call for intellect if you're going to use it uh-huh do it Oh, unskilled. No, uh, just looking, looking and asking around. You actually get some, uh, uh, some, some looks at you like maybe they're offended that you're even asking. Yeah, great. Okay, that's what I don't need. <laughs> Celine watches quietly from the back. And Zeke goes and approaches these individuals asking these questions with a slight smirk, smirk on her face. Mm-hmm. Do any of them look like they're getting hostile? No, they just, look offended. they just look offended that he's asking that kind of stuff openly. Are we, yeah, I'm assuming a hotel and full thrusters is where we're asking this, this region of the... Oh, I just be. I, I'm mainly looking for uh, stuff that I would not be skilled at. So, being a typical Star Marine, being a dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so once I decide to lock up the ship, I am going to calm Celine. And see if she picks up. Yes, Captain. Where are you? Wait, 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 wait. One, one second, sir. One. <laughs> Zeke, you can't say that. Yeah, yes, sir. What, what, what was that now, sir? <laughs> uh, just wondering where you were at. Uh, we're still around the Grand Hotel. Um, we're near the the entrance. It's a grand place. It's very large. Zeke is over here asking all the wrong questions, sir. Uh, I'm still doing some shopping. I think uh, Deck and Carl might have headed over to uh, the Cliff District to do a little bit of research, or they might be in Thrusters getting drunk. I don't know. I'm I'm really into this. Uh, you won't believe the kind of items they have here for sale. It's exquisite, sir. Quite exquisite. I uh, yes, actually, I intend on doing a little shopping of my own. I'm heading over to the Marrakesh Trade Association. Do you care to make hey, your Hey, you want another <laughs> round? Yeah, I'm making a double. Uh, but you, Marrakesh, what was that, sir? Oh, yes, yes. Um, if you went, I will send a, uh, someone to pick you up and meet us here at the, the hotel, and then we'll all head to the Marrakesh together. How does that sound, sir? I can just come straight to the hotel then. All right, so I'll... Uh, the hover limo will be waiting for you, sir, in a few moments. 
Give it about 15. Hey, Jim, go pick up the captain. All right, sir. Hey, Deck, you got that triple click. And... <laughs> Just looking at the map here to make sure I understand where we are. Okay. So, yeah, I'll head over to the Grand Hotel. Okay. And meet up with the four of them. Uh, after making sure that Krish has enough burger rations and alcohol mm -hmm. to hold him out. This, yeah, burger fire water. Yeah. So, yeah, then I'll head for the hotel and see if I can't meet up with these these troublemakers. Okay. We'll put you in scene. Uh, everybody will be in the hotel lobby, either at Thrusters or hanging around the concierge. Yep. I'll troublemaker. And once I get into the lobby, then I'll calm deck. So your your cell phone's going off. Yep, yep. Um, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Ken. So I, I, I'm here in the lobby. I was thinking, doing a little shopping down at the Marrakesh Trade Association. Wondered if you wanted to come with. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'll I'll be right down. Um, and we'll get you a key. You gonna hang out with us this evening? We got an extra room. Uh, we'll we'll see. All right. Yep. Be right there. Hey guys. Um. Oh wait. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Caps down in the lobby. I know. I... Finish up. Finish up. <sighs> But uh, what time is it now, Ref? Oh, yeah, that's nice. the clock. We'll make it noon. And so that'll be... I'll add four hours to our, our clock. Okay. So it's noon. Hmm. Yeah, so... Pulses. Yeah, as you guys are kind of gathering, milling about... Uh, talking with each other, I guess, here in the lobby. A, uh, a gentleman comes scurrying in and pulls up at the bar. Uh, you can see he's, he's sweating pretty profusely, and he holds up two fingers of the bartender. Bartender turns and starts pouring him a drink, which suddenly, uh, through a window, jumps a black widow. You hear the guy scream, and he goes to run, and she's on him in an instant, grabbing him by his collar. And pulls them out back the way she came in. He didn't look familiar. This is the did kind he? of place that you don't ask questions. And yeah, did he look like anyone we've seen wanted posters of? Nope. Seems like a total random act. You could only speculate what that widow was uh, chasing him for. Oh, Captain's standing right there, right? Yeah, happened right in front of him. Selene's yeah, curiosity I just, is about I, to get the better I, of her. She looks, she looks right at the captain and goes, "My curiosity is about to get the better of me." <laughs> this is a place where that can get you killed. Uh, you know, I spent time as a journalism, right? As a journalist, right? So, you know, this, this, I feel like there's a story here. Quite interesting. Zeke's actually kind of interested, too, because it's like, okay, what do these things do? <laughs> Intel. Intel. <laughs> and she didn't, like, pull out any weapons or anything. It was just... She manhandled she, them with one hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I, w I was going to say, obviously augmented strength given build of build of the widow. Yeah. So I'm looking at the map here and where is the Marrakesh Trade Association in relation to the hotel? Uh, so that's the cliff district. So number three, it would be southwest, assuming it has a, a magnetic north. OK. So in that grouping of buildings right there. Yeah. Got it. OK. Well, if you all are ready, we can head over to the cliff district do some shopping, do some listening, and figure out where we might want to set up a place to <laughs> Yeah, Hey, so, uh, ref, my check is going to be an eight. What are we doing? I got to say. I can't see what I'm rolling. Come on. And I never roll good with this either. Yeah, like success for psionic telepathy. Read surface thoughts, features. What is he thinking through his head right now? The guy that just got snatched up and jumped up, pulled out the window. Like, oh my God, I shouldn't have killed that person. Or damn it, why is this happening to me? What What is going through that dude's head? No, I just got he, snatched up. Yeah, no, it's like, uh, no, he, he's certain he's 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 got moments left to live. I hang on to his thoughts until that last moment. Mm-hmm. Hey, no, he's just heard he's going to die. Damn. Just repeat. I look it back, back at the captain. Back. I look at the captain and was like, ah, there was nothing in his head anyways. And then I start walking over to the bar. Sounds like uh, you guys are getting gathering. Anybody get, get leaving, heading to number three to the uh, Cliff District? Uh, yeah, that's where Captain wants to go, isn't it? So uh, the, the the hover limo is waiting outside for us. Might as well use it. It's paid for. All right. So stepping out of the hotel, your uh, your driver is standing at the limo as if he were ready to open the doors. Except there are two gentlemen on either side of him, uh, hold the, you know, kind of preventing him from opening the doors. Oh. Well, these two gentlemen look like. I look over at Zeke. It was like, I can do things, but mm -hmm. I don't want to make you scared. So you yeah. handle them. Two, yeah, two, yeah, two, two males, uh, black suits, sunglasses, for a military kind of look. Hmm. Um, I'll approach him. Is there a problem, gentlemen? Yeah. So you guys, the uh, the crew of the Zephyr. We are. Yeah. Uh, Admiral Drorykin would like to see you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Captain? The Admiral wants our presence. That's, good. That's interesting. I was hoping to talk to the Admiral myself. All right. Well, you will, not, you will not be needing the limo as it's just across the street. We'll be meeting at the uh, the Rose Pavilion. 
Oh, I've been wanting to check that place out anyway. That sounds great. I'll tag along. By the way, I am wearing my normal uh, protect suit, static blade, dagger. Yep. All right. So entering the Rose Garden, um, you know, your, your typical five star hotel at an entrance, there's standard seating on the first floor. Uh, there are private booths. Uh, you can see, even though you, you visibly see the people in it, you don't hear any audible, you know, the clinking of silverware, the conversations coming out of this. So there's some kind That's of true. field up protecting the conversations, right? Uh, the, the gentlemen lead you uh, to a back room uh, where there's an elevator. Uh, and they, they buzz the button, the bell, you know, bell rings for the elevator going up. There is room for the seven of you. And the first okay. one walks in, and the other one stands there waiting for you guys to, to follow him in. I <laughs> get in the elevator. I am absolutely ready to draw that static blade at the first hint that this isn't kosher. Yeah, no kidding. I'm not comfortable with this either, but... Uh... <laughs> ah, come on, guys. It goes this way sometimes. We're all right. Dag just comes on in. He's already lubricated, ready. To yeah, Celine is just. She just kind of looks up at him and is like, and then "I'm not skilled by. enough I'm for this." I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will put but myself in between Celine and the captain, even though I'm pretty sure Celine can handle herself. But Mizun would like to think that he could go all Tetranomicron cleric on these guys. <laughs> yeah. I guess we won't have a heard from his Carl. I've been talking, but you know, when I mute myself, you don't hear me. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, I'm just going to walk in. I'm, I'm going in? Yeah. Everybody's in. They're ready at the ready, though, it sounds like. I mean, I don't have anything oh, yeah. to be ready with, but. So so how long have you guys been working for the Admiral? Oh, uh, the one that goes in the elevator with you says, oh, about five years. And he leans over and pushes the close button with the other guy standing on the outside. That guy's just on the outside, kind of standing there, almost like at a parade rest, standing at the elevator as the doors close. All right. Uh, he buzzes you up. You're going up to the third floor. Um... When that door opens, he kind of pushes his way past you and starts walking. Do you have any questions for him? What can you? Well, yeah, it's like what can you tell me about this Admiral Cat? You know, we've heard we've heard things, but nobody that really knows him quite as well as you probably do. Um, he, he's one of the uh, the heads of uh, the conglomerates here on Thief. Uh, you should have known about him before you came here, so not going to answer too much. Uh, as you walk, you guys are walking down halls. You realize these are private rooms, uh, going down several different types of hallways through this. Uh, this is a this this is kind of a skyscraper. This is like a ten-story building. So, uh, but he'll lead you down the halls, and then he uh, stops at a door and opens it, and just gestures for you guys to walk in. I'll walk in. Celine walks in. Yep. It's equal Try to call up, call on my eight years of Navy training to be ready to stand at attention. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So walking oh, into this, good. as you guys start piling into this dining, this private dining room, it is a, uh, you know, it's a long uh, table uh, with uh, seating for about twenty-four. Um. And it's got uh, uh, like a buffet lined up on one wall, food. Uh, the other wall, you know, it's got a little uh, cart with drinks. It's got the little sniffers. So you got the, you know, you know the crystal uh, jars where you got to figure out what's in it by sniffing it. And there is a gentleman, a, uh, uh, a oh, and there there are there are, there are five five figures that are armed. Obviously, they look like they're carrying. Uh, automatic uh, slug weapons uh, but there is a refined gentleman uh, in his late 60s um, yeah 
He's a uh, trim. He wears a crisp naval uniform without any insignias other than a silver skull and crossbones and a golden D. Uh, but he uh, obviously has the stature and, and uh, acts like a model naval officer, despite the fact that he's no longer part of the Third Imperium. Uh, he greets you. He, he sees uh, he, immediately. You guys feel like this guy is a charming, urbane, cultured uh, gentleman. It's like, welcome. Uh, I was hoping you guys would be able to visit me. Please take a seat. Uh, as I come up to the indicated seat, I will brace to attention. I won't salute. Sir, thank you for inviting us. And I will sit down. Sit down, yeah. Celine walks over to the buffet table uh, and elegantly, with grace and style, moves down the line as if though born a socialite and gets her plate of food, sniffs a couple drinks to match the food with the drink, and then comes over and sits down at the table, gives a small little head bow with a devilish smile always afoot, daintily takes a seat as if she was born into royalty, and then slowly starts to eat her food. Uh, Zeke's going to stand behind the captain because he's not used to being around officers, so uh, I'll stand behind <laughs> The captain, uh, uh, I guess, like in a bodyguard position. Yeah. Give me a quick recon check. Yeah, yeah, recon check, Zeke. Yeah. Here we go again. Come on, baby. Don't let me down. Oh gosh! Oh <laughs> God! No, I'll just say oblivious. Oh man! Yeah! Wow! Oh my gosh! It's acting like a PFC. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Straight Dick, boost. Dick just reaches his hand out and says, "Good, good to see you, sir. I was hoping we'd get to meet you." That gives you a firm handshake. Yep. And then he grabs a seat. So what can we do for you? No. Oh, uh, my contacts tell me uh, you've landed with some interesting cargo. That's interesting. Our cargo holds are empty when we landed. I think he's talking mm -hmm. about the captain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh. <laughs> yes, the captain. Those are his company. Nothing. Um, as she takes another bite, he's no longer a captain. Actually, they marooned him. So, does that make him a bilge boy now? Well... I'd like, uh, Damn it. I'd like you guys to keep pulling the strings on uh, what you're, what I suspect you're up to. Uh, being new in this area, you have never seen your ship before. Uh, my contacts tell me the uh, Zephyr has never landed in Thieve, uh, which means you're probably bounty hunting. Am I correct? Of course you are. You know, you know what's happening here. Mm hmm Well, shortly after you landed, there was a old Imperial salvage ship that landed down in the uh, scrap heap. I suspect there's somebody there you're going to want to talk to. That's interesting. We were looking for that ship, among others. Yep, he gives you a wry grin. Says, if you could uh, get the unnamed person that we both know who we're talking about and bring him to me, I could pay handsomely. Alive or dead? Uh, the pleasure is in alive, but I'll take dead. I have 
only one question to that. If we are able to deliver this person alive and they wind up in a state other than that, when you have had the pleasure of your entertainment necessity, could we have claim to the body? Body? Hmm. I feel like that is something we could negotiate. What do you think the and terms? I, what do you? What's what's a fair term for this uh, exchange? Well, we would simply deliver someone to you, and you would deliver what remains to us. All right. Well, this is your. You That's said wild. you set the price. What do you want? What do you want for this? For us delivering him to you. But he does have a bounty on him. There's a bounty oh, always see, on him. Zeke is fuming right now. <laughs> you, uh, forgive me, Admiral, again, since we just arrived here and have not been here before. Uh, the word was that you have set a bounty on this person. I have. It is at two million credits. To me, that would be the price to be paid if he is delivered. What about 2-5? Wait a minute, Captain. Sorry. Sorry. No. Maybe money is everything, but passage is forever. We let's make the delivery and then we can discuss bonuses after the fact. I would like to think, Admiral, that if we do this job for you and do it well, that there would be other considerations. That is entirely docking, possible. Docking here is not exactly cheap for the un uninitiated. Some sort of recognition for any time we're in port. Are you looking... Uh looking for some freelance work or you were you asking to work for me oh freelance absolutely simply some help with docking fees if we do this for you to be recognized as a businessman in good standing right, so you're asking me on top of the two million bounty do you want the body back assuming he doesn't survive his ordeals and you want me to pay for your docking fees for how long? I'm not asking you to pay for the docking fees that we paid now. Simply some sort of token for in the future. Okay. Well, let me get a persuasion. Or I'll take a chain. We want to carouse, carouse, then uh, persuade. I, I think that'd be appropriate, considering okay. the uh, atmosphere. I'll get a task chain going on that. Uh, I got a carouse of two and a persuade of one. I have a knife. And <laughs> I, my carouse is one. I do get a one for my soch. And my persuade is a zero. I Again, if it's social based, I'd get a plus one to that. So, do you want me to roll the carouse and you roll the persuade? Or are you thinking, Greg, that I would make both rolls since I... Oh, no, I was, I was hoping somebody would uh, step up in a little bit. Yeah, I'll help out here, definitely. That's, I interjected in a little bit of the conversation, but... You know, the female persuasion might benefit. You know, he's 60 years old, but it doesn't mean he's... Uh... Oh. He's, all, he's I've, been, I've been a complete yeah, lady at this t table. Thank you, Zeke. This, this, guy is, this, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy's, uh, he's, uh, he's obviously uh, been using anagathics, too. So. They've all right, upgraded so shall I make though. the crows roll? Yeah, I got it in the task chain. It is ready. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, that gives us at least a plus in both of them. Uh, if I roll the crows, that's a plus two. But your persuade is a plus zero. At least this way, it's a plus one, a plus one. 
And I just go ahead and roll that carouse in the box like I normally would, right? Yeah, yeah. Drag okay, and drop the cash chain. Nope, it didn't accept it. No, you didn't oh. drop it in the task chain deal. Okay. Let's see what happens. No. I can over. Oh yeah, I can override. No. There you go. I got a log. Okay. All right, here we go. Come on, let's try. Big bucks, no whammies. Big bucks, no whammies. Oh, he wants a whammy. Nice. Wow. Well, yeah. All right. All right. Well, I think we can make this happen, gentlemen and ma'am. Now, as to our our passenger, who you obviously have some concerns about, if he is seen on the will he be in danger he will bounty's not on him but i assure you will uh if he is found outside of a red flag establishment mm. he's not gonna be happy fair enough sir he will make sure that sorry sorry captain sorry captain damn it Go ahead, Doctor. No, I don't want to interrupt you. Yours is way more important than mine. Trust me. I just need to know where to find a shifty doctor to sell some body parts for a skill argument. <clears throat> um, that's probably a conversation to have somewhere else. <laughs> but well, it makes such he, great he runs things around here. Yeah, I feel like yeah. this guy knows. The, the, the Admiral starts making some and starts making some eye contact with the other guys, bodyguards in the room. Can I have one of them? I'm, right. I'm kidding. Uh, that was a joke. Yeah. That was a joke. I'm sorry. I'm very inappropriate at times. I do apologize. I'm just going to go um, back to eat my food. That's probably a wise idea, Doctor. We, we, we got a little early start today, Admiral. You have to forgive us. We've been on the ship a long time. Let's see. Well, I recommend you guys get going before uh, your contact leaves planet. Agreed. And I will make sure that um, nothing inappropriate leaves our ship while we're here. Good idea. It was a pleasure to meet you, Ed. The pleasure's been mine. No, Daddy stands. And I come automatically come to attention. Snap attention, yeah. <laughs> Snap <at> attention. <laughs> yeah, I stand. Like I'm going to keep eating my I, food. I also brace to attention, and then I give him uh, a nobleman's bow. It's nice meeting you, sir. Selene takes yes. one last bite, sets her fork and knife down, looks over very nicely. Scoots your chair back, then lets out a dirty, nasty belch. It's like, oh, <laughs> shit, I'm showing. And then turns around and grabs Zeke by the arm and says, come on, we're done here, let's go. And starts leading them out of the room. <laughs> and oh I would gosh. recommend we head directly back for the supper. As, as I'm getting up, I kind of look over my shoulder and say, sorry, Admiral, one more thing. Where, where, where could a soldier find a good time around here? Is everywhere in the dock. Yeah. He gives you a right grin. He says, depending on what kind of good time you're looking for, you either come back here at night up on our uh, the top floor here, or you maybe down in the slums down in the lower city. Oh, no, no I don't want to be slumming. Sounds like sounds like rooftop bar might be a nice place. All right. Nice to meet you. Appreciate your time, sir. And I lead the way back to the elevator. Do we still have our escort? Yeah, uh, no, the guy will he'll open the elevator for you, but he won't follow you in. Okay. Get for the ground floor. Mm-hmm. 
and then back out to our limousine. Okay. Or, uh, before the before the doors uh, close, it's just instinct. I'm just gonna say basically simplify to the body to the to the guard. Yes. Yeah. He said hurrah. Okay. Hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, while we're still stay, we head back. Um, we're gonna. You want to get in the the limousine? I'm gonna step over into the lobby of uh, the Grand Hotel. Head back up to the room. If we're gonna head to the lower city, I need to change. I have some gear to pick up at the ship. Would you please meet us at the ship as soon as possible? Zeke, stay with her, please. All right, Captain. Deck, doctor, do either of you need anything from the hotel? Uh, there's like, you know, the bar. There's a couple of things. What do you need, Cap? You need somebody with you? Um, well, I'm thinking we should hit the Undercity to find this salvage ship before it goes anywhere. Uh, yeah, because that's what I'm doing is I'm going up to the room to grab my armor. As I said, I took and it off. I, yeah, I, if we're doing that, I need to. Yeah, I need to go back to the ship with you. I left a few things. That's what I was thinking. Uh, can one of you guys grab my rifle just in case? Hopefully. We Damn, Doc, we're this. never gonna get a good drink. <laughs> uh, Zeke, you'll be meeting us at this ship, so. All right. Well, hey, Captain, why would we want to go to the ship? We can't fly the ship down to the lower city. We're gonna have to take the limo. And it's quicker for you to come back, pick us up, and then head down. You don't have anything at the ship you need to pick up? No, I carry all my stuff in the bag. You see this big old thing that says Gucci on the side? Okay, as long as you're staying in your room, Zeke, if you'll escort her up to make sure she doesn't run into any interference, as soon as she's in her room, you can come down. We'll head to the ship. All right, Captain. I so, gotta go back yeah. to the shit, Celine. I left my armor. I didn't. I didn't know we were going on that kind of evening. <laughs> Deck, I thought I always told you to be prepared. Last time I read the tarot cards for you. Ah, uh, yeah, you know. Well, I mean, I've got. He reaches back behind his back and pulls both of his knives out, <laughs> and kind of tosses them around and stuffs them back in. I'm always prepared. Ah. Uh. Yeah, so I head up to the room, grab my uh, ceramic armor, my pistol, and all. My backpack with gear in it. Suit up and wait for them to return. And as soon as Zeke comes back down, then we'll head back to the ship. Uh, Mizun's going to um, doff his uh, protect suit and put his hostile environment back suit on. Helmet open at this point, but mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And uh, he'll sling his accelerator rifle and his uh, APDS rounds for that. And then buckle his static blade and dagger over his hostile environment suit. Actually, he'll just take all four magazines he has standard and APDS. Because, hey, if you're going to go looking for trouble. <laughs> I was going to say, um, all right, on the armor, are, are, is that going to make us stand out? That would be the question. Are we trying to, like... And that was kind of wild. Yeah, that's a great question, Z. That's kind of why I left mine back on the ship. You know, if we're going in looking like we're looking for trouble, we got to bring everything we have. Well, that's what I want to know, because then I'm going to put on my heavy armor, too. So. The thing is, if we're in the... What is it called again? Law of the Street area. Yeah, if we're if we're in the the down below or 
What was that called again, Greg? Lower City. Yeah, if we're in the Lower City, it sounds like a lot of that's kind of a free fire zone. So I can't imagine that we're going to draw that much attention. Yeah, we're going to be stepping out the limousine looking like some bosses all geared up. And then probably have to hit an elevator or some other form of travel. Because I don't think the limo is going to take us down there. It might. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do here because if I put that's 12 kilograms. I just think. Is there? I mean, is there some some sort of landing area in the lower city? Some sort of docking area? No, not a. <laughs> no. <laughs> so they <laughs> might, they might be somewhere here in the starport. Yeah. Well, he did say he did say that his contacts observed the uh, the solid ship land in the scrap heap. In the scrap heap. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you thought that the, the enemy was at the starport. Okay. Oh my gosh! I gotta get me. Oh my god! One set of armor. <laughs> hey, nothing stopping you guys from going to the um... store before we go downstairs. Yeah. Sure that. I, I'm just not sure if I want to go in there with my boarding back suit. That might tend to draw too much attention. That's why I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. hey, can you share the map, the city map yeah. again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. I don't see how to pull that up like like I do when we're in D and D. Uh, yeah, because I haven't. Uh, you guys aren't on it, so that's why. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, I'd say we find some sort of taxi or public transportation that'll take us down, at least down to the edge of the lower city, so we can head for the scrapyard. Or scrappy. And Mizun is going to keep his rifle slung when he's out walking. So it's not like he's carrying it at Port Arms or anything. But I mean, I guess... Sorry, just out of, out of character. Do we know or not? Maybe not even out of character. I'm looking up information on my tablet about this place. Are people, like, walking around arm to the hill down there or is it just kind of shady town and oh no yeah um now i guess i, yeah, I guess to... I, I guess the images that you're able to pull I, do you want to give me a computers i see if you can hack into some some feeds otherwise yep go ahead. yeah i sure do Ooh, and i'm i'm guessing right. when they talk about not breaching the the domes that that would take something like a plasma rifle or a fusion gun. That yeah, yeah. Imagine you, you you don't see the 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 edge of the dome here, but yeah, it would it would be overlap this whole map. So it okay. had to have some distance and yeah, so I mean, you know, accelerating. Yeah, it can't yeah, I can't lose its kinetic energy over that space. So, so something significant. Okay. And no, uh, sorry, Deck, you're, you're not able to figure out not off of feed. You, you carouse, you could ask, you do some streetwise. Well, I mean, we're all like in the limo together, right? Riding back. So, Zeke, I'm kind of with you on this, Zeke. You know, if we look like we're looking for trouble, trouble might find us a lot quicker. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I might find. Let's see if I can afford. I only got nineteen hundred credits, but if I can get, uh, well, yes, yeah, so and not to slow down things, <laughs> but it it was payday, and I I don't remember what I've divvied out and what I haven't. So, um, I mean, if we need to go shopping, well, I'm uh, only thinking of cloth armor. I could fit in. It, it wouldn't stand out versus my boarding vac suit that makes me look like uh, a low. So. 
Uh, I'd rather. <laughs> did, did I pay everybody? Um, the first, the first two. Yeah, I spent. I bought weapons, so. <laughs> so I think. Um, so I paid everybody like fourteen, and then another twelve later. Is that right? Sounds yeah, right. That yeah. sounds right. Sure. Sounds good to me. So hang on. So give me. You guys keep talking for a minute, and I. It was payday yeah. anyway. I was gonna. I was just gonna gonna. Do it in our game chat later, but I, we've got a little more. We don't have a lot more, but we earned you know another couple thousand each. Greg, I am going to make a streetwise roll once we're back toward the ship. Yeah, we do a few people just to make just sure that see. you know, hey, we're thinking about going to the lower city, and you mm-hmm. know, how would you recommend we we dress? Yeah. There you go. That's a good nope. What about Caress? I mean, we could talk to Cash. He should know. Mm-hmm. That's true. How is this supposed so, to So, yeah, apparently there's. I'm guessing there's like no one to talk to as I'm heading back to our ship. <laughs> So when we get back to the ship, I can pay everybody thirty nine eighty five each. It's okay, for for the the last month. Well, which was really just a couple of weeks. Well, that'll help the pocketbook. So, anyway, given that I'm not finding the information I need, then once we get back to the ship, um, I do go look up Krish to make sure he's still where he's supposed to be. Trunk as a skunk. Perfect. We like that. And then I'm going to let him know that we may have a lead on one of our bounties. And that's going to take us out to the scrap heap. And let him know how I'm thinking of gearing up and asking him if that'd be appropriate for the area. He lets uh, burp and you swear to God you see a bubble come out of his mouth. <laughs> right on. Uh, lower city? Uh, well, everybody down there is armed to the teeth. Excellent. That's what I needed to know. Thank you. Well, then that answers that question. So, I'll look, I'll look like Halo. <laughs> so absolutely, I just won't lock down the helmet on my on my uh, hostile environment suit unless we get in the get in the suit. So yeah, plan is to describe stance, hostile environment suit, accelerator rifle, static blade, and dagger. Okay. I will be in my uh, boarding back suit, laser rifle, Laser pistol and Gauss pistol. Gauss pistol. Uh, Gauss pistol. All right, cool. And then uh, my five stun grenades and my five frags. So I've got my poly and my mag pistol, a couple of frags, a couple of smoke grenades, and. I don't know if we've got a medic with us or not, but I got some stands and trauma back too. Yeah, Carl. Speaking of which, Carl, you still got a bag of body parts on you? 
We didn't find a buyer. <laughs> we can find a buyer where we're That's going. That's all he's wanted to do since we got here was to find a buyer for these body parts. Got a couple kidneys. These guys street wise though, don't you, Carl? You, you could have been hitting the street and asking questions while we were doing this some of the stuff, right? Did you ever find a buyer yourself? No. 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 Yeah, you still my carrying question those body is... parts around? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking at the clock it's, here. It is what quarter after eleven, ten yeah. after eleven. Your time. I, yeah. Yeah, we. Could, I, I. I'm good for a little bit. Yeah, if everybody else is, because there there is something that's probably about to come up. I don't want to leave us hanging on it. Okay. Yeah. It, no, it, I'm it'll, it'll, be, it'll be more. It'll be more, it'll be more climatic to end on it than start with it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm geared up. Um, and then I do a quick comm search for transportation to the scrap heap. Looking for what? It's a scrap heap? A transportation. Scrap heap. Oh, transportation to the scrap heap, yeah. So hovercraft and ground vehicles won't do it. They have to be flyers to get down there. Otherwise, you got to take the elevator down. Okay. So, I mean, we're just talking... We're talking 100 credits or something if we're dragging if we're getting this guy out unconscious how are we going to get him out and not we'll just carry him. Yeah. if the if the flyer fee is 100 credits to get from the ship to the scrap heap i'll pay for that okay selene will be able to carry him most of the way uh, well, we may not. We may not want that kind of attention, Celine. <laughs> you know, I think that if we get to the point where we have someone to carry, it's not going to be that big of a deal, especially in the lower city. What you're carrying someone who's unconscious. We've seen people carrying dismembered bodies around. They're literally traveling with us right now. All yeah. right, that's fine. So, so they uh, they're all suited up, ref. They've done drove by, picked me up. We we don't have to rent anything because we got that limo still. The limo can drive us to the elevators, right? Yeah, and then you'll have to walk through the remaining distance out. Or was actually, it, or do you rent fly a plane or, that will take us there. Yeah, or probably, you know, find a little, okay. it's like a tut tut, you know, somebody. It's a Cessna. <laughs> okay, so we got a flyer heading down. Move this. Go into the trash heap. Any any qualms about this, guys? I know it feels like we're accelerating, but I just want to make sure everybody's good with it. We're headed to what? Area ten, the Church of the Traveler. No, uh, no, the scrap heap is number eight, so farther up. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh, that's even better. Mm -hmm. No, I'm good with that. That's kind of out away from everybody, so depending on what's in this scrap heap, yeah. A little bit of everything, probably. Uh, oh, I'm first talking magazine. as far as getting bodies. Oh. First magazine I'm loading is APDS. I'm loading smoke. Better than blowing smoke, I guess. Yeah, I'm dropping thermal smoke in my pistol. All okay. right. I got Go a ahead. range of 400 meters on my rifle, so where do you want me, Captain? <laughs> I'll give you the scene as you guys do a flyby on this. So, uh, flying by the scrap heap, you are able to get visual on the uh, salvager. Uh, the ship is landed next to a stack of uh, a scrap uh, topped with a downed far trader. Um, the lower deck seems to be structurally uh, not intact, like been gutted open, it's exposed. Uh, but on this far trader is a giant uh, red flag hanging from it. 
Ah, uh, cool. red flag area. Yeah, and it looks like uh, there's like a bridge, like you know, that goes from the the, the salvage ship that goes to the the, the trader at the same level. That's how this thing landed. Okay. But remember, those aren't always honored down here. Uh, yeah, I think they are. Just give me a recon check. Do you want to, give um, that to Zeke? You probably got a scope on that. Uh, yeah, on my on my pistol. Yeah, I got a scope. <laughs> yeah, sc scope that flag real quick. Okay. Uh, what do I roll for that? Recon. Recon. recon? Yeah. With a plus one. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay. Well, let me just do this. That'll help. I know what I'm training in next. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you don't have. I'm not trained in recon yet. I know what I'm training in next. Oh, you're not. You're not trained in recon. <laughs> no. But here, this is how you recon. And I come over uh, Zeke's shoulder and raise his arm up, get his pistol just right. And say, you scope for this, and you scope for that, and you lift this way, and you look that. Follow the ridge right. line with your eye. All right. So with uh, Celine's help, Zeke, you're able to tell that those flags are fake. Okay. I will relay that information. Perfect. And interesting that they feel the need to try to fake a safe zone. Well, when you're wanted criminal with a bounty on your head, well, of course you do. Do you think they're just being smarter than the rest, Captain? Let's look for a spot. Let's look for a good spot to set down. Uh, okay. As we're as we're doing this recon, is there anyone out moving around? Yeah, there. You know, there's scrappers, the citizens of the, uh, the lower city, just picking through the trash like little Jawas, you know. <laughs> okay. Lucas yeah, don't but, do. Disney don't do. Do we see anyone? in or around the salvager or in and around the far trader um, no no visual movement from your vantage let's set down about 500 600 meters from this and we can walk in Two. unless someone recommends we set down differently I agree, Captain. You just put us down. Okay. All right. Well, the uh, uh, the, the guy you, you hired will put you down, no problem. Okay. Yeah. If we can find a spot, I'd like to set down where we're that little bit of distance away, and then. Still be able to see the salvager. Yeah, this as we is, walk it, up on it. Yeah, it, it's pretty elevated. It's kind of at the top of this, the pinnacle of the heap up here. You you make out the far trader board that you can see the salvager from this vantage. But yeah. Okay. Everyone, keep their eyes peeled. I know another skill soft. I'm looking at mine. Well, stealth I do have, so. <laughs> Yeah, so if you guys are going to stealth in, everybody needs to roll a stealth check. Yeah, I don't think that's in the cards for me. No, let's don't do that. Celine just doesn't feel like making herself float that far of a distance, to be quiet. Well, uh, we need to disperse, so we're not on top of each other to cover for grenades. Um, are we just going to walk right up to this thing, or what do you want to do, Captain? By chance, Ref, do we have a battle map or a closer-in map where we can set a uh, team? We're, we're 
theater of the mind until I until I say otherwise. I got you. Um, then I'd say we use whatever cover we have, and because the cover would give a plus two. Well, that's just for shooting. No, that's I don't know how that works for. Uh, Let's move in a little closer, find some spots to hole up for a little bit. And observe. And observe. Because I do have, I have tactics. Now I only have, I have a one in naval tactics, but I also have a level zero in tactics in tactics, general. Tactics, yeah, yeah. The issue is that it takes a long time to develop a strategy for attacking an enemy base. So, mm -hmm. and I'm yeah. not sure we have that kind of time. So, so um, are there just like heaps of uh, ships in here, Craig? Yeah, it's sh ships, vehicles, just large, large objects. Is there any high point that I could access? Yeah, you could get an overwatch where you're looking down on it. Uh, for yeah. Sure, some, several locations. Just tell me the range you want to be at. Uh, well, the range of my rifle is 400 meters, so... And then I would use stealth for that. Okay. Let's go ahead and give me a stealth check. You know, that's a great idea. While you're doing that, I'm just going to walk up, you know, walk closer to the scavenger or salvager. God, and I then, can't roll the thing. Oh. Oh. Um, and act like I'm searching for stuff to to take with us. Yeah, you know, like you're, yeah, act like you're a, you're a scrapper. Yep. Yeah. Probably a little better dressed and armed than most, but, you know, even I'd scrappers say. have to have their hierarchies. Yeah. So look, going around looking like a scrapper, you can get almost right up to the, uh, the salvage ship. Okay. Looking around, is there, do we see any crew moving around? Is the ship locked up? The ship is sealed. The irises are, are sealed on uh, the salvage ship. Uh, obviously, the far trader, just because the whole bottom is rotted out, you could literally walk right in through the, the bottom. Um, now, you said this was kind of up on the uh, pinnacle yeah. of like a pile of trash? Or a yeah, pile of trash so, or whatever. Yeah, this would be like the... Uh, I don't know how well this... The salvage ship is like that, and then on another pen... A far trader would be like that at the pinnacle, based on the stack of trash. I don't know if that, okay. if that makes sense on this. On this, if it's yeah. picking me up at all. But you know, if we can, I'd say let's circle around and then work our way up this trash heap toward the far trader. Okay. I don't know what the distance is on that boss, but oh shit. Have you been uh, using, have you been deducting from your last, uh, oh no, last you time I did it, it, it. It. yeah, you would have yeah. recovered it, yeah, 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 okay, uh, yeah, so the, what's, you could, you could obviously do that, uh, what's the clairvoyance going to be able to just tell you what's, uh, what you could see Specific in there? ability, yeah, allows uh, viewing of a situation at some distant point, I didn't get, didn't want to, you know, the range, um, the effect of the check determines the level of detail perceived. Okay, so... And Let me see if I can just show this. Hold on a second. It takes me 20 seconds. Yeah. So, Celine, I'm sharing this with you. Uh, so, uh, uh, how do I want to describe this? Uh, there are six figures all standing in cover in this room with, with weapons up. All on this, they'll, they'd all be on this, this, like up here, facing this way. In which direction are we coming from that way? Well, you don't know yet because you're not in the no. in the far trader. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Okay. But you know the far trader layout. You would because you guys that one that would be where where people come in. All right. 
I inform the, the captain as we get closer. Um, as you guys see, Celine kind of steps back and is quiet for a minute. And her eyes turn to like a milky white and then veins around them start kind of protruding a little bit as uh, she is truly focusing her head, arch backs a little bit and then whispers, Captain, there are six individuals with weapons ready. Be cautious going into there. It might be a bad day. And then her eyes return back to normal and she kind of shakes there for a second. Yes, there are six armed assailants in there, Captain. Uh, I believe they know of our presence. And I described to him the far trader um, layout. We're bringing gifts. Yeah, dead body parts. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll accept that. Hmm. Be a nice time to have a grenade launcher. <laughs> <laughs> or a pocket nuke. No, uh, no, uh, no. Or somebody yeah, that's already got a lot of evidence. Yeah, and we uh, that might get us. <laughs> I also have um, thermal smoke already loaded into my pistol. All right, I turn my comm on, get my comm dot out, basically using that as a throat mic. Mr. Okay. Zeke, Zeke, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Captain. From your vantage point, can you see inside the bar trader? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, sir. Yeah, the upper, the uh, the the upper deck of this is still pretty secured structurally. We have reason to think that there are six people in the lower deck ready to receive us. No, this is this is what well, his view. Sorry if there was any confusion. Was Celine was that is the upper deck area. So they're in the uh, passenger. They're in the passenger area. Yeah, and it's just that that has been totally stripped out. Uh, from what Celine. You can tell that's where staterooms used to be. They're just not there anymore. Oh, it's been so modified. It's been so Assuming that gets to communicate, that's going to make this really tricky. Zeke, it might be worthwhile you coming back up to join us because you've got the room clearers, right? I got grenades, yes. <laughs> if we want them alive, I, I got stun grenades. I mean, I, I'm assuming that's what we're going to want to do. Or her. All right, be good. Delete, uh, over the com. Zeke, how strong is your armor? Um, Let's hope they don't have anything big. Sure. Why don't you go ahead and just rush in there? I'll follow behind you and lay down some smoke, and then you throw your stun grenades. And let's just see what happens. Let's go on SWAT mode. Okay, let me look at what my... Yeah, some good old style smoke and flashbangs. And... I know you want to play, but right now I need my access to my... It's my armor. Back to uh, I have thirteen, Texan thirteen or 12, eleven. I got the Tech eleven, right? I was just wondering what uh, I was asking game mechanic wise if uh, you're able to take some pistols, rifles, maybe some SMG fire for maybe a round or two before your armor fails. <laughs> <laughs> 
give you enough time to take a couple of shots to the dome, throw grenades, you know, things like Marines do. Yeah, uh, I know. Them, you know, yeah. slip it behind you and lay down some smoke. All right, that actually leads to a good question. How do I add armor to... You just equip it, and it should automatically um, mm -hmm. give you your resistances. On the combat tracker, right? That's yeah, so I see. So what I'll do from a zoom, I can cycle it to uh, equip now. And now it should, uh, you went to lightly encumbered. Well, you may have probably already worked. Um, but then your armor. Well, I'm not in the combat tracker. Uh, I'll get you. Okay. We haven't had a combat yet. We've been playing for like two months. <laughs> Initiative hit points. Zeke, dude, you're a beast, bro. Yeah, you just go ahead and stand there for a couple of rounds. I'll get you. I'll get you. No problem, bro. Where is my amp? Why is it not showing my... I equipped it. If you... After you equip it, where is it at? Did it, uh, under your actions, I think it shows it? No. It should go in the, it should go in the armor under equipment. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because I've got protection 10, fire, laser. Oh, there we four. go. Um, I have 13, protection 13, radiation 7. There we go. Does hostile environment suit not provide armor? Oh, this is not programmed. Okay, that's what I'm running into because I'm like, wait, yeah. I've got the hostile environment suit that offers protection like armor. Yeah, no, well, it's an unprogrammed okay. line item. Ah, we learned something new. Hostile vag suit. Level 10. All right, I have to tech level 11. Let me delete this one. Let me drop this on. Okay, so now you got two of them. Let me go and make that one. And then make that equipped. There you go. Now go back down. Let's scroll all the way down on your equipment list to armor. It should be set. Yeah, because I got a protection of 14, fire 16, and laser 16. Protection 12, radiation 1. Uh, so it probably keeps going over to the right, uh, 140. Okay. And, uh, okay, there we go. So, shall we? I'm ready. Are we going to want to start this now or next week? <laughs> Well, yes, I, I have a feeling we're going to run into one more thing before we get oh, there. Oh, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. because if we was getting into combat, just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do you guys want to yeah, do, do this? Let's start putting... Um, so I'm guessing that Zeke and I have the heaviest armor. Um... I'm going to say yes. Yes, yes, you do. So I'll follow right behind Zeke going into the far trader. I don't have a weapon, just so everybody's fully aware. <laughs> um, you know, in that case, Doc, if you want to you want a weapon, find a Doc? spot that looks, that looks like it's going to be out of the way of fire and be ready to handle casualties... I'm quite okay with that. Cool, that was my plan. Just wanted everybody to make sure we were all on the same page. Don't worry, <laughs> yeah. if you die, I will save your body parts. Yeah. Hey, and you shake, a bag, you shake a bag at him. <laughs> How armed and armored are you, Dick? Um, well, I think I had it wrong on my equipment sheet. So I have advanced poly, but I didn't have the money to buy that. So I think I had... I think I put the wrong thing on and add. Um, 
I've, I've got lightweight poly, poly, which is still not bad as a plus 12. Oh, oh wow. So you're as, you're as well armored as Zeke and I. How well are you armed? I'm not. I've got a, a mag pistol. Okay. So yeah, if you want to hang awesome. back. Yeah. 3d6 plus 3 damage, man. Yeah, like I mean, I'll, I'll do what I can. Yeah. <laughs> if I can get if I can get close, to hey Doc, can with you a, use without armor? I, the blades will come out. Can you use weapon stock? Uh, I would not be very proficient with them, no. <laughs> Just a scalpel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could probably use a knife, but I'm still getting a negative. Was <laughs> oh, that why the Mary incident happened? <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to actually kind of force you into this combat. I think yeah, we're as prepared as we're going to get. Uh -huh. So here comes the map. So this upper deck of the far trader has been gutted at. Now it has a command center and a big storage facility. Um, Zeke, as you peek up, you see uh, trained down on you is this woman, Maria Silverhand. Uh, she does look like this. The difference is her arms aren't crossed. She has a uh, light machine gun pointed directly at your torso. And uh, her crew are ready to roll. Let me make them hostile. I mean, you don't have to. All right. All right. Describe to me. She's. They're ready. Okay. Go ahead. I can roll. We can so this is just one big open space yeah they gutted the entire top of the uh, far trader just to have this set up but it is solid decking it is still solid decking yes okay is there any cover that i could run to until i'm close enough to throw a grenade uh yeah about six meters in front of her son of a biscuit yeah, but to the right or left, though, is, is closed. Yeah, we're just going to call you got those two rails, but, I mean, it's wide open. There's nothing. Yeah, this this was prepped as a kill zone. We could be in pretty serious trouble here. You guys, yeah, we... go on in. I'll be right here waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, as, soon as, you as soon as you walk on that map, I need everybody to roll initiatives. Do it. Where's the okay. initiative for that? Are there actions again? Are the action. Yeah, it should yeah. be under actions now, yeah. Dang it. I don't want to go first. <laughs> Why'd I get a negative three on my initiative? Because you suck. Shut your mouth. <laughs> that was out loud, I forgot. <laughs> Where's that mute when you need it? <laughs> now, how do we my know which... Yeah, Because the initiative, initiative can be set as dex or intelligence, correct? Yeah. Because I want to make sure mine's set oh, for yeah, intelligence. De dex would be mine. Where do we set that at? I'm, from what I'm told, it actually auto-does the, uh, the higher of the two. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. We'll find out. Let's see. Yeah, because that's why I want to know is because uh, my everything rolled, then it said initiative minus three at the end of it. So what is Celine? Celine is uh, initiative mod plus one. I rolled five, and then it just turned it into negative three. No, you're negative three. That's based off the eights. You rolled a five. You got a plus one. You rolled it. You rolled four, and you got a plus one for a five. So okay, it went yeah. off your it went off your intellect. Yeah, but still, I mean, why yeah, did it my, a, in... Because it's off the effect of an eight. Test it. Initiative is still a skill check. It's off the effect of an eight. Right. 
So okay. eight minus eight, uh, five minus eight is negative three. Oh, it's still okay. All right. All yeah. right. All right. Would we be considered surprised? No. 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 You guys would not be considered surprised. You know. No, I won't make a tactics check because I only have a zero. I don't want to hurt everyone's initiative at this point. Given the way we've been rolling. And what do we see? Is everybody like, they're all armored up and armed? No, they're ready. Yeah, they've been waiting. Yeah, but are they armored? I mean, they're all oh. armed. She's got a light machine gun. What What does everyone else have? Yeah, so the uh, the other ones, the her crew members, are equipped in vac suits and pit body pistols. Okay, so she's the main threat. Yeah. It will. Because yeah. I mean, the body pistol does what? 3D? Yeah, it's not, it's not much. It is. But it's close 3D, to it. Three, yeah, 3D minus 3. So. Stunner, stunner, stunner. Let's go. I don't have a stunner. <laughs> Uh, you have stun grenades, though, right? Oh, yeah, but how close would I have to get to throw up my stun grenades would be the question, because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Jesus. Why is that coming? Why can't I get my character? I keep on... Oh, uh, white screen come. All right. Click. Minus one should be my initiative there, Greg. All right, we can move six meters, right? Oh, uh, you rolled twice. Yeah, time. I rolled twice. That minus 31. <laughs> well, well, Deck goes first, I guess, so I gotta wait for him. Yeah, I was kind of waiting on that answer. Is that what it is? We're moving about three. Yeah, you get six, you get, well, you get six meters, and I just dropped everything down there. So your free action, a movement is six meters. Each one of these is a uh, meter and a half. So that means you get four hexes of movement. Oh well, that helps. And there. how many zero mm -hmm. cover? Zero so cover. So you get well, to here, uh, right? I'm going left. Can't I save my movement though and like dodge or roll out of the way? Yeah. So I'll get it to you in a second. So it's okay. Cool. Six. Uh, move it. Moving is a minor action. Sorry. Yeah. So normally you get one significant action and one minor. So like if you attack, then you get one minor. If yeah, you don't. Great use a significant action though you can trade that in for two minor actions so right, be in your left, case dude. Carl you could actually move three times okay cool I'm sitting here trying to figure out what the fuck I can even do on my turn like I can move here I can stand here I can wait here <laughs> <laughs> here's your reactions I mean honestly my, I'm still there. I stopped thinking about this thing. I'm going to take two minutes. Um, <laughs> I feel like we need a focus. You're 18 years away with the range of the pistol. Yep. I'm just gonna move again. I'm gonna do two minutes. I'm going right. Yeah, it's 15 meters. I'll go ahead and make two minutes. I'll prove it. Okay. Do I get a 
three or two of the two. If I'm not doing a major. Did you did you say my major can be two minor? Yeah, it can be two minor actions. So you get a total of three minor actions if you forego an attack save. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm still, I'm still rushing these guys, man. Okay, go ahead, give it to me. Might suck, but somebody's got to go. All right, next up, uh, go ahead and pass your turn. Yeah, I closed the dang tracker. All right. Okay, Zeke. Can you kill but one of us? I'll move to there. What's the range on my uh, throwing grenades? That's a good question, too. Looks like I got the rules on it right here. Damn it, I should have thrown one of those. 20. What? How can I throw further than my gun can shoot? <laughs> 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 Effectively. You can throw further than it can shoot effectively. So grenade weapons. I don't want to make sure I get my rules right because I, I think you pick a point that you don't and you throw it there and it's a just a eight is your to hit. Is verifying. Leaders reacts weapons. Yeah, I didn't think that through. I might have screwed. Aid. Oh well. Good God! Why is this? I hate this rule book. <laughs> and it's I just realized me. these yeah. guys are within sixty meters, aren't they? Uh, I'm going to approve that movement at 6 meters, sorry. Combat. God bless. Why can't they get, just give me straight rolls on grenades? Hey, is the chat all messed up for you guys? Like, like yeah. big spaces in between, random See, weirdness? Yeah, I'm, tr yep. I'm trying to, I was trying to fix it. I, I only finished, it's, uh... It's an interesting, I don't want to say anything, but it's interesting. Let me try to keep fixing it. Oh, it's all good, bro. Here we go. Grenade weapons, thrown, launched. Thrown grenades use the athletics dexterity skill. But I don't, oh, it ranges 20 meters. 20 meters, thank you. So, short range would be within 5 meters. And those have the blast trait. So, so a weapon has an explosive... Um, upon a successful a successful attack, damage is rolled against every target within the weapon's blast score in meters. Dodge reactions may not be made against a blast weapon, but targets may die for cover. Yeah. The what page, what section were you on on that? Is that under grenade weapons? Uh... The blast trait, that's um, under combat, uh, very last section, weapons traits. Um, and uh, then, oh, it's under traits, of course. Yeah, and then uh, I got the range from equipment, scrolling down to grenade weapons. And then it gives the type of grenade, the tech level, and the range. The range is always 20. And then oh. the damage. Well, I'm within 12 meters, so I can throw a grenade. <laughs> yeah. So, 
so for my accelerator rifle these guys are within short range which means that if i take the aim action and then fire i will get a total of plus two to this so zeke you got a target where you yeah. throw it at uh all right at maria yep got it it's an athletics check Dexterity, right? Yeah. 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 Yes. Thank you. It's. And this stun grenade does 3D. Yep. Yeah, let's see the chat. Ah. Dang it. That's not good. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else for Zeke? All right. She does not like that. Opening up her rapid fire machine gun on Zeke. Miss. Ooh. meters I'm within range is she up on a platform and these other guys are down on the ground yeah it's basically how it is okay prevented any damage crew two oh there you go deck body pistol Dex Army soaks it. Yeah. Ooh. The wrong one earlier. Best. Found of damage. Crew four. There, there we go. Us. Prevented damage. You guys got this one. Hey. Nice. Active. Alright, well, I guess I'm gonna make my movement. Come on. And do it. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. I see about right there. And then I'm gonna go into the prone position. I have an effect for that, I think. Oh, do you not? See, so he's got an armor bonus. Okay. Zoom. Alright, you said I can move four. Yeah, it'll it'll start showing too. You'll see what happens on fantasy grounds. Okay, yep, I see it. So I'm gonna move there. And then Man, I don't wanna shoot her and I do wanna shoot her. Okay, so let me just double check something because I think the ammo for, or the, um, um, the stats on my character sheet are for just standard ammo. Slug throwers, the number of weapon options. I don't understand that. Yes, 
Because you, you don't see you have you don't have a gun equipped. Yeah. Which one are you using? I want to use the uh, APDS because that's what I said I had loaded in. Okay, I just set it to carried. Okay. All right. So how do I attack? A I'm gonna set that person? To next. Uh, yeah. So you uh, you're gonna hit holding the control button on your keyboard. You're gonna left click with your mouse on your target. Okay. Right now you'll see that he's targeted and 13 and a half meters away. Okay. Yeah. And then on your actions tab of your your player sheet. Okay. Um, I've already set your accelerator rifle to dexterity. So all you got to do is double click the attack. Ah, oh, miss. That's it. Ammo takeaway one. I mean, it didn't give me the plus one, but that's okay. Uh, for the ammo that you're using? No, um, because I'm under 25% of the weapon's range. Short range oh, is a DM plus yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, so real quick, so you so you know where that's at. You in the upper right corner of the uh, sidebar is an MD for modifiers. Okay. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta click on that before you make your attack roll for the correct one. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Next. All right. Next time around. Okay. All right, that's it. I'm going to pass you, Celine. All right. Let's hope this works, guys. Because if not, I think this this combat still could go sideways. All right. I am going to instill pure, unadulterated fear in her mind. That is my goal. <laughs> okay. All right. So it is under my telepathy ability. It's a routine. It's a six. Got it. Let me set it. Set the six. Here we go. That's what's up. Yes. <laughs> Plus six. Holy yeah. smokes! And it also says that the um, setting emotions, love, hate, fear, and others may influence his beings. The effect of the telepathy check is used to judge the strength of the emotion projected. So I'm gonna do a on a morale at minus six on this. I know I said we weren't gonna use morale, but it makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. My, oop, minus six. Maria. Oh god. Got a four. She is cowering. All right, and then with that, um, as a free action, can I use Persuade? I'm going to step forward and try to project my small voice as much as I can. That, as you see, we are stronger. Uh, somebody help me out here. I'm getting tired. I can't be dramatic right now. Pretty much like you just we just walked in. You unloaded everything you had on our strong guy here. Nobody is hurt. Your boss is cowering in fear at our mere presence. Throw down your weapons now. Something right, like give that. Me a, yeah, give me a persuade. Hot dang. Successful. They, they lay down their arms, see him, uh, Maria kind of start going into the fetal position. <laughs> Nicely done. Nice done. All right. Zeke has a newfound respect see, for the Zidani. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> while, while this is happening, though, hold on, guys. Wait, wait, wait. I come up to Zeke real quick, and I'm like, quick, take her in custody. Oh, yeah, funny, I was yeah. just going to say, you, now see, when you grab, look her, at, grab her, <laughs> When you look at Celine, her eyes, color of her eyes are red. She has what looks like almost another iris around it with small black dots in it spinning as she is just continuously focusing on uh, our target. Uh, I'm just going to run up to her, uh, kick her uh, machine gun away, and... Uh, cuff her up, whatever we got to cuff. What do I have to cuff her up? <laughs> I just put a going in her head. Don't move. <laughs> I'll start gathering the weapons uh, from I, the other guys. Yeah, I was going to say, I start collecting the other guys' weapons and checking to make sure they don't have anything else on them. That's, That's all I have. Yeah. 
Zeke's just drugs. pissed and he's cocking his weapon and he's like, oh yeah, shaking his head, grinning his teeth. <laughs> yes, it was cute. Shoot this one. <laughs> <laughs> you got you going around asking for their blood type? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is the one I need. <laughs> All right, okay. Maria. Zeke she is... Zach, will you will you make sure that Maria is not going anywhere? Yeah, you got it. And next time, let's remember a pair of handcuffs. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm gonna, so I'm gonna got, enjoy that. Much. It just so happens that I have some endless rope, so we can tie her up. <laughs> I've got I've got some infinite rope we can tie her up with. We can tie them all up then, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sure the, crew might, the crew might be uh, worth some money. After after about a minute, maybe probably just long enough for you to get up there and get some of the stuff caught up, you know, her tied up and whatnot, Celine would blink, go to a knee, and uh, stand back up, and her eyes would be normal. And um, what's your name would probably start to be coming out of it here in a minute so oh i'm ready she moves i'm shooting <laughs> <laughs> yes and, and she, yeah she starts coming to and realizes that the, the terrors aren't real uh it's like oh my god what did you do to me uh, we showed you your inherent weakness <laughs> go captain <laughs> Uh, well, who sent you? Is she well, secure at this point? She is. So, like, was it the traitor Peter? Or was it that... Uh... Ooh. Or was it her all? It was Peter. I knew I couldn't trust Peter. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I look at the f five crewmen. What are your plans now? Do the crewmen? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've collected well, their see. weapons. Well, time time to retire, I guess. You want you want to try to recruit them? Yeah. Let's get to that later. Let's let's get the the okay. meat and potatoes yeah. out for the sake of time. Yeah. All right. So, but yeah, let's let's interrogate Maria, and that way we can wrap up. Because I'll give you the hook for next week, mm -hmm. or right in on. two weeks, or next session. Yeah. So now that she's secured, and the other five are out of out of our hair for the moment. So where's Red Thing? Not gonna tell you. Well, you're gonna tell us. It's just a matter of when you're going to tell us. Hey, Celine, Doc. show me those things again. <laughs> Do you want to see something hey, crazy? Doc, Check this out. Show her the last person we interrogated. Oh, that's a surprise. I need, I need her fingers. Look, see. Okay, she she turns ash and white again. I'm ready to vomit. <laughs> uh, your fingers will complete my uh, collection but you might be able to keep them if you tell my captain what you need what he needs to know I don't even know he needs to know it I need your fingers look we can do this very simply or we can do this the hard way yeah it, between between glances at Carl and you, she just starts nodding up and down. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, we'll do this. We'll do it you know, your way. I'm still taking your fingers. So, where's <laughs> where's Red Thing? Yeah, he's in system hiding behind a uh, uh, the planetary moon's dark side. Brave man. Pity it's likely to get him killed. Well, 
I was here to to try to make peace uh, between two rival uh, gangs here. To, with the with the two of them united, we might be able to uh, rival the admiral. I think you'll find the old man's a step or two ahead of you. What are the gang's uh, names? She does. She does. She slaps her head. He sent you. <laughs> No, it was Peter. Don't listen to this guy. Sometimes he just spits out random words. This guy. He's not really our captain. Keep going, Captain. Was, yeah, I mean, hold on. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, what um, are the other gang names? You know, that that Admiral kind of rubbed me a little wrong. What, what was your thoughts there? What was your plan? Oh, uh, just want to make sure I got this. So they got one of one of the uh, larger uh, pirate gangs here. Aunt Eve uh, is run uh, by a gentleman named Peter. Yep. Uh, let's see if he's got a. Uh, I'm just seeing if he had a way, gang a gang name. I flipped my com on and set it to record. Yeah. So it's Peter Vallis is one of the rivals. Now the problem is he was a uh, he was uh, he hates Aslan's. He was actually enslaved was as a child. Uh, and the other rival is a Aslan named Horror Iron Tooth. He runs the third largest pirate gang here on planet. About to be the fourth. And was mentioned once already. Uh, with the two of these these gangs combined, we've may have been able to rival the admiral. The problem was getting them to to, to uh, come to a truce and be at peace with each other, at least long enough to at first to overthrow them. Well, what if you take one gang, we take the other gang, then we got a truce? Damn it, I did that thing again. <laughs> Well, and yeah, to do, the negotiations uh, have just started, so I don't know how, if it's going to work or not. How's, how's the old man keep everything held together so tightly? Oh, the Admiral? Yeah. He's in with the, the corporations. I lean in on uh, Zeke and kind of like poke him in the side there. Oh. Why don't we ask them which ones, if the Admiral likes the King of Dranax, the guy who we're supposed to be working for. What our friend said. Uh, Maria is like, I, I have no idea. Hmm. And still looking up at Zeke, um, standing close enough where the captain can hear, though. Well... Maybe now that we do this in the name of the admiral, uh, the we help the admiral out. He's already in good with corporations, and with the king of Dranax now has a better ally thanks to us. Does I say we know? just kill her and go. Can I shoot her in the head now? I mean, no. just make her see the fear. Does does I'm, so we don't need to have this conversation in front of these guys? But I don't know that we need to deliver these folks tonight. Sure. Let's sleep on it. Yeah. So she does. Uh, well, well, let's, let's, let's leave it at this. I know it's late, real late for me and Penguin. We got work tomorrow. But she does. She is. She's gonna say that uh, Red Thing is on the fourth moon, of, or yeah, the fourth moon of this system's planet, on a nameless rock tag five forty PD dash five slash four. He's waiting word. For me uh, to see if we can get the alliance. Well, that means we would need access to your ship, or at least your com codes. Yes, yeah, so I'm like out of character. <laughs> yeah, 
I want to have some discussions before, before we do this. But like I, you know, yeah, we we, we, we ended at this. This we'll, 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 we'll yeah, right yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, because this could be a thirty-minute conversation, and maybe it'd be better. It would be better to do it fresh at a new session. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, actually, like it, this is a conversation that we could do On offline. Yeah. Even. Yeah. 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 We could add because. Let's let's remember too. You know how much the bounty is for turning out. And then we can kill. We get or the bounty back. Ship. Definitely, I think it's time to call it for tonight. But I just Agreed. wanted to make sure everyone remembered that. Yeah, agree, agree. Yeah, I just dropped uh, the record for the spacecraft of Vulture Class salvage hauler. Nice. You know that's a. That might be a good thing to have the three new guys that we picked up help pilot back to Drenax. Yeah. Well, she has five crew who worked that ship. Well, I was going to say. But that's two of them just... We might have to split things up a little bit, but yeah, we can fly that baby back and sell it as a prize. Sell it as a prize. It's the start of our fleet. Correct. That is that is a plausible end game for this campaign. It's a <laughs> fleet of pirate ships by the players. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A fleet that can haul the stuff <laughs> we steal. So. Mm -hmm. And the mad oh, we protect from big stolen. Start your own supply chain logistics company. We need we need <laughs> a lab ship for the doctor to yes, perform do. his experiments. Yes, I do. <laughs> but this time we're so, not turning it into a floating casino. I mean, just just to put a pin in where where we're at. So next week or next session, next. we want to talk to the five guys and see if we can recruit them. We need to decide what we're doing with Maria. Recruiting. And then Remember, we're we, going. We got. There. There's a possibility of two bounties with Maria. We get the admiral's bounty. If he gives us the yeah. body back, like we asked, we get the other bounty from whatever Topaz or whatever. We got two bounties we're looking at for her. Technically, well, three, and Tor Torpal and Clark, they each yeah, have their own Torpal separate bounties, but but right. you and, could only yeah. claim well, one of them. Like, depending. Yeah. One of Torpal well, and it, Clark. It, it, yeah, it it'll, really, it'll well, depend on wanted. if she's alive or dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dep yeah, same differences. Different outcomes could happen, but yes. So. Anyway, I don't want to keep dragging this out because I know some of y'all. I mean, I have to work in the morning. It's getting a little late mm -hmm. my time. I know it's super yeah. late, you guys, yeah. this time. So. Yep. Yep. No, like it's, right, it's not like I did this Monday, Monday or anything. Uh, yeah. Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys are animals. Yeah. yeah. I'll just say that was an awesome first combat. I just gained respect for the Zadani. That was pretty cool. So. Yeah, that was pretty cool. As soon as I saw that roll, I'm like, well, shit, there, there's that. That combat's done. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you added that morale roll in there, and I didn't know anything about that. I thought for sure we could get at least another couple rounds of them shooting at me. Yeah. So, but that was cool. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll call I'll it. Again, uh, guys. Yeah. yeah I'll hey, leave uh, it open. Greg, yeah. When you got some time, because uh, I'm trying to figure out how to do that that uh, chain, because I tried uh -huh. to set it up. Um, but then when I have my play Thank you. This was, that was, that was fun. So much fun. Hey, yeah, that yeah, is, yeah, you keep laughing, bro. That was good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm finally learning, Caro. So, oh, by the way, before I forget, do we want...
want to make it official that in two weeks we start at 8, 8 we start p.m. A half Eastern. Hour later. Yeah, okay. just so settle that'll, PM. That way, yeah, that way we're not stressed and then. Well, let's discuss okay. what we want to do on Discord, and then we'll start from that point in, in two weeks. Yeah, we'll we just that. yeah we just jump into it. Yeah, we'll start uh, we'll start doing our recaps via Discord chat rather than open up the game with recaps. Well, we'll get some more game out of it. Right on. So, all right, guys. Alrighty. Good game as always, man. All right. Guys, take it easy. Okay. Yep.